He's not. Is your son gonna watch this? He's not gonna watch this. He doesn't. It's not on his radar. I mean, he kind of cares. Like maybe he will. He's eventually. on some other YouTube shit. Like he's watching just like some shit. He's on some cool shit. Of. Yeah. He just likes really crappy rap right now. Oh, what does he like? Like shit that sounds like it was recorded in someone's trunk or their right. Volvo or something. Like it's like really really lo-fi. Like I try to play him lo-fi stuff. He's like not lo-fi enough. Not lo-fi enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's he into? Uh, a lot of southern shit. Like like young like kid shit. A lot of, a lot of rappers that say like a lot of words in a short amount of time. With like crazy effects on it. Yeah, a lot of that too. And a lot of just grunts and like, hey, uh, that ah. too. He tries to put me on to stuff and some of it's cool and some of them are just like, this is not good. Have dude. you heard uh, 645 AR? You heard no. this dude? He, um, he, basically, he basically, when he came out, someone in my office put me on to him a few years ago. And um, let me just do it, make sure I got it right. And like when he came out, I was like, what the fuck is this? And like, I couldn't see it, right? I was like, well, I, I don't understand what's going on. Because he basically raps like if Elmo's on helium. That's <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. But he's serious? No, he's, it's his thing. And then in the context of what's going on in the world rap wise, you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Like it makes sense. He's like ahead of his time a few years ago. I mean, I'm not mad. No, like, you can't be mad. No, I'm not mad at all. Right. I think it's cool. Like so, every once in a while he puts me on something, I'm like, all right, this is decent, you know? And right. then I'll like share, I'm like, this is UGK and he loves UGK. Oh, he does. He loves UGK. Oh, you he loves UGK. early okay. three six. Like that's cool. Like I'm cool with that. You, you know? got through with UGK, you're in a good place. Yeah, yeah. You have some common ground. Well, I want to give him a good foundation. <laughs> yeah. And from there, he can build. Build right. and destroy. Yeah. Three right. in the morning. Mm -hmm. You only listen to skinhead music? No, 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 no. <laughs> I just, just never heard of it. I'm not dissing it at all. I just okay. never really heard of UGK any is, of this shit. Is like, UGK still has probably the nastiest, nastiest single song. Which one is that? Pregnant Pussy. Oh, I don't know Dude, that. Oh, my God. See, oh, I, I, I like know in high it. school. I know it, but I was so, I was so into that album, Three in the Morning. I know you love Pregnant Pussy. I know that. I know you like that song for a long time. That's a good one. Yeah. And you probably like it. I got in trouble for like a week for playing in front of my girl. Like she like just hated my fucking when she guts was for pregnant? it. Nah, before, That's but it was one. like. Playing it while they're pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> wow, <dude. laughs> you guys have experienced that phenomenon. I haven't, I haven't been there. It's yet, magical. So I don't think I have. Yeah, it's magical. It's, it's awesome. extra special, right? Extra special. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> but that song is about banging chicks that you didn't get pregnant that are pregnant. Oh, yeah. Fucking which uh, is actually someone else's baby mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And they're, Jeez. anyone that's listening, just look up that song and it's really graphic. You're making Alloy mad. His blood's boiling. He no, I'm just thinking. I'm like, damn, yeah. what if your lady's the girl that they're rapping about that'd be while fucked she's up. pregnant? Yeah, that'd be fucked up. <laughs> I wouldn't, Listen, I wouldn't I like took, that. I took an anthropology class at, at community college many, many years ago when I was trying to like Santa Monica trying to learn. Yeah. Santa Monica college. And, um, we had this anthropology teacher and he's like, he was telling us that basically the, the, the ratio of how many husbands are actually not fathers to their kids is so fucking high. I'm sure nobody does a test and like, <laughs> and no one thinks women are scandalous like that, but like, you know, like they're just like us. Yeah. And, and he said, yeah. when he broke the, I don't remember what the number was, but I was flabbergasted. I was like, wait, what? It was fucking crazy. It was like, yes, if you do an average, and it's like this many, this percentage of fathers are not the fathers of their children. I was like, Fuck. that's fucked up. So if you have trust issues, that's fucked up. Imagine but, that. But that's you can't, fucked up. but if you, if you put the question to a, a relationship that's otherwise good, oh, uh, sure. You're fucked. Yeah. How do you have that conversation? Like, Can we do a DNA test? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Well, well I, I know my 16 year old's mind because he has these gigantic nostrils like me. Oh, yeah. You stick oh, you your thumb in them. nostrils. I'm just Stick this microphone. Dude, I'm, I wish I had nostrils like that. My sweet. airflow sucks. Yeah, I can I can smell from really it's far away. Except them. Yeah. <laughs> there's like there's like a purpose to him, I think. I'm like a fucking hound dog. Yeah. From like a week yeah, yeah, exactly. block away. <laughs> what is that? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I feel like I feel like if I had bigger nostrils, I'd get it would be like a like a like an air intake on like a desert vehicle. Like I would get sure. better I would get better speed. But like maybe that shit hurts. You ever breathe you ever like wake up and take a deep breath with your nose, like <laughs> inhale and it fucking hurts? It hurts your brain. So maybe your his brain always hurts. Yeah, maybe. He's getting some air in those fucking I never noticed that about you. You do have big nostrils. And they're growing too. Your ears and nose never stop growing. Damn. That's fucking hard. So my ears are gonna be like dude. this big. And my schnoz is just gonna be like you're gonna be like a secret weapon. Have a beast. Straight yeah, up, it's gonna curl. Do you ever do any cardio? You ever go to the gym and shit? And not you don't do that. especially. No, it's too much work. Getting chased. See, you yeah. yeah, getting chased. But like that's the thing is like when I'm I'm always trying to work out and I got to throw that in. You're I losing weight. You look good. By the way, thank you. That's nice of you to say. Um, I have to think to not breathe through my mouth. Right. And breathe through my nose. And I only have one janky ass nostril that works. The other one never Sick. works. So I'm I'm breathing through a fucking pinhole. Always. Deviated septum, yeah. right? 
I had that surgery. You did? My did shit it, was fucked. Did it take? Yeah, I, I couldn't breathe. I sound like Darth Vader at night. I would lay there, and if, if if the pillow was within like a foot of my face, I felt like I was being suffocated. Oh. So I got it, and I could breathe. I got elbowed in the nose. It was f- fucked up. Moshing. But it's good. <laughs> It's good. Caught, caught up in the mosh. Caught up in nah. the mosh. You know that song? Was mud wrestling. <laughs> nah. <laughs> that shit, it works. So, I so welcome it. to the show. We're finally at a, uh, per per everyone's, um, everyone's been asking that we do a graffiti show, right? There you I, go. I always feel like, my thing is like, I've been surrounded by graffiti my whole life. Is it even interesting to anybody but me? Apparently it is. I think no one gives a shit. I'm like, who, who wants? Who cares about? Like, no, I feel like no one knows what we're talking about except for us. Right? Do non graffiti writers want to hear the graffiti? Thing yeah, or is it just graffiti everyone, writers. It's non graffiti writers. I think that. Want, I mean, graffiti writers for sure, but like non graffiti writers, they want to. They want to talk about it too. I guess the thing that happened after we did graffiti. Well, you guys are still active. I'm pretty inactive, but not. No, you're not active. I'm not active. <laughs> you were. I haven't done anything illegal in you, 25 years. Yes, you guys yeah. are retired. I'm really totally. retired. Okay. Uh, you're on the pension program. You're I'm on the pension. Super, yeah. super totally yeah. retired. Yeah. Yeah. Super totally retired. You guys are yeah. officially retired. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what happened after our generation is uh, the kids after us, everyone started writing. Like it was only a certain group of people that wrote graffiti when we were in it. Sure. When we were younger, say that way. Okay. But after us, I would meet kids and they would be like, "Yeah, I write graffiti and I skateboard and I have a rat." Like they, but did they didn't it. really write graffiti. Though. No, they just had a tag word. They had a tag word, but yeah. they were like considered themselves writers. So like, sure. I'll have you know, I'll talk to someone like, "Yeah, I used to write." I'm like, "No, you were a toy. Like you didn't write. Yeah, like, you got to put in the fucking time to like yeah. you know, you got to be dedicated." So, mm-hmm. so yeah, the thing is, I think since everyone fancies himself a graffiti writer, no offense. To all you toys out there, everyone that fancies himself a graffiti writer <laughs> mm-hmm. is really interested in graffiti. Right. Sure. So There's I have fans. Huh? Fans. Vans. Fans with an F. Fans. Oh, yeah. sorry. My yeah, bad. not vans. I was like, why are you yeah. talking about fans? <laughs> yeah, fans. So uh, listen, there's two graffiti writers on the show today from the almighty and legendary AWR MSK seventh letter click. That's right. Uh, one is called GK, one is called Alloy, good homies of mine. Mm-hmm. Known them a very long time. Yeah. Um, I was actually just, I mean, shit, just to quickly touch on this, I was just remembering when you guys were c- pulling up when you overdosed on Southern Comfort in my apartment. <laughs> do, do do your guys know about your apartment that was a block away from the boardwalk? No, they don't know about this apartment. It was, it was the fucking coolest fucking thing. It was a block <laughs> away from the boardwalk, this, the heart of Venice. Yeah. And yeah. we get shit faced and walk around Venice in the middle of the night. Yeah. And just like blend in with the fucking weirdos. Yeah. But you guys like played a drinking game and cheated just to watch the the youngster like it's super drunk yeah and i got blind drunk you Fuck. you basically i remember this you were dying from alcohol I poisoning died. I and did die. sony stuck a mean streak down my throat yeah to save my life to clear the the yes wow sony the air. So, and like we were all like didn't know what to do and sony of all people yeah takes a fucking streak and gets the puke out of your throat to clear the passage mm-hmm. because me sorry my thing was like well drop him off on the beach yeah gk is dead yeah, so cool. how do i get him out of my house because i don't want to catch a charge for like what's about to happen it was really like cool i had idea. any way of covering up a crime back then because right. i'm a fucking idiot i'm mm-hmm. still an idiot mm-hmm. but i was like maybe if we take him down to the rocks and leave him on the beach <laughs> sober up <laughs> yeah. no Aww. i thought he was a corpse yeah. yeah. oh, it'll be fine. r.i.p it was really oh, yeah like that would have been done dude yeah and uh that i'm i'm glad you lived <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. That apartment, man. Like we used to be like, I, I, I'll i find it. Remind me to get you a picture of this. We would have Jason. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting your texting. We're telling he's blogging. Historical. He's blogging. I'm fucking with him. I'm fucking. Okay. Uh, no, do whatever you want, man. It's just, it's just the most important graffiti show in the history of YouTube. All time. Um, we would have a meeting. We've had AWR meetings at my house in my apartment because I was like 16, 17, had an apartment a block away from the pavilion in the middle of Venice, in the middle of the fucking nineties, which was like a whole other story we'll get into. Mm -hmm. But we would have a meeting and it would be literally like 20, 30 dudes in the apartment, all drinking forties. And then we'd just be in this tiny little shotgun fucking shack apartment with like disgusting carpeting and roaches (laughs) and shit. Yeah. And then we would like, everyone would get so drunk and in the beginning, I'd be like, don't burn my house. Like, let's not tag. And then all of a sudden, we just spill out and destroy. Forget it. The wall across the street from the your house. The wall across yeah. the street. The wall across the other. Like, yeah. I used to paint. Like, 
the graffiti van would pull up and I'd tag on the graffiti van be- while they were cleaning our graffiti. <laughs> I would sneak out in daylight right. and tag on the van. Like, there's a picture right. of that. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. there's a picture of that yeah. too. Yeah, it was just chaos. It was just fucking chaos. And like, I remember one time, like my dad didn't, my dad never really knew exactly like, he figured out I wrote two-tone somehow. I didn't tell him. Mm-hmm. And then he said that like, he said that he and I, he's like you know I you know you write graffiti I'm like well yeah but I just do murals I don't tag you yeah know? sure and then one day he was like he pulled up to a parking meter that had like in Venice had like a two tone tag on it and he's like and I, and he goes I came to your house to give you a piece of my mind and he came over to tell me off and he comes to my house and he's walking to my house and he looks to his right and there's just like ten foot AWR letters like <laughs> he's like fuck yeah it. there's no <laughs> too late yeah there's no fucking you know. Yeah, um, it was a little different for me. But when I when I went to your apartment, you were like you were like the big kids because I was like a couple really years younger kids. than you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, he has his own apartment, right? Damn. And then you had like a, a purple Ultima, and I was like, yo, he has his own car. But that was later. I, that was when I moved to Penmar when I had the purple okay. Ultima. Yeah, that's when I thought I was. That's when I I started feeling like I was very doing smooth. It? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> purple though. The purple Ultima was yeah. like. In, it was like the poor man's J30, like the poor man's Infinity. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like any like with that car, I could get any like any nurse. Any For any nurse second. I pulled over and that thing was it was it was a wrap because she would have a, a like a Honda I would have the Altima or she would have another Altima it was like beautiful I just liked it was purple yeah yeah eggplant eggplant was his brother man where's that car now. Uh, I traded it for a painting from Pearl Shung. Oh, sick. Eventually, yeah. That's what's I, I trade. I was like, I'll give you this. I hate this fun car. I give it to you for a painting. <laughs> Damn. Um, so yeah, we we were. Um, Alloy wasn't around in the Venice days so much. He no. came on later, but yeah. he was in a different crew. You want to share that with everybody? Yeah. Uh, that was he was in a tag banger crew. Oh, what <laughs> was, was that? We were banging steady. Uh, it's an old crew, but um, you don't want to talk. Still around. Yeah. yeah, no, they, they are. But um, no, I came around with uh, hanging out with Fate and Chunk. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Those, my two sloppy brothers. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Love right. those fucking idiots. Those fucking guys. Yeah. Um, Dude, Fate and Chunk. Oh, my God. The we used story- to ride our bikes to your house, me and Chunk. You used to ride from the valley to my house, which yes. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> On BMX bikes? Yeah. Red yeah. line. That's oh, sick. I had a red line. Chunk's like, fool, hey, come here. Hey, uh, Come here, let's go down the street real quick. And you're like, you get in the car with him and you'd be like, you'd be like, give me a ride to the spot. And all of a sudden you're out for three hours, like stealing a fucking jet ski or something. He's, he, he's talking about, about something he wants to steal. And then you get to the spot and he yeah. makes you steal it. Yeah. yeah. That, was yeah, the, yeah. that was the move. Yeah. Every yeah. single fucking time. Every yeah. time. Yeah. I was telling this guy, we, uh, he had a lick where I, we had like a friend in high school that drove us to like an auto parts store in Simi Valley. Yeah. He's like, yo, there's these like, it's like headers or something dumb. He's like, they're worth like a thousand dollars pop. Yeah. We're gonna go in there. Each one of us is gonna make like 10 grand on this lick, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like you're, I was like 16 or something. I was like, that's a, that's so much fucking money. Yeah, I'm gonna buy I'm myself rich. a brand new fucking car. Yeah. So I'm gonna do all these things. I'm gonna be set up. And then we get there and uh he's like, I'm gonna wait at the corner, I'll whistle to the cops. Amazing. I was like, all right, well, fuck it, dude. I just like, I threw it. I threw a this fucking point, rock gotta go through, through the it. window yeah. and it was tinted glass. So the rock just went through the window and shattered that shit. Yeah. And I tried to be like the fall guy and jump through it. Oh my and God. And I just like fucked up my hands and arm. And then I'm like landing in the store and I don't even know where the fuck I am or what I'm getting. And then we still got shit. And then I think it make it. Bro, why were you, it. why were you so crazy? You would drive from the fucking valley and be like, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go fucking roll through fucking tortilla flats neighborhood, or I'm gonna yeah. go like I'm gonna go to the projects. Like you just couldn't, just you a, could not stay out of trouble no matter what the fuck you did. Like you sought it out. You I was were like antagonist. You were you were yeah. yeah. You were you were like so horny for danger. Yeah, I was super super, <laughs> super, super horny, horny for danger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I it's funny because I'm I'm just visiting LA and I've I've revisited a couple of those old shitty neighborhoods that I used yeah. to love cruising through. Yeah, and th- they're still pretty shitty. And you would cruise through until yeah. someone, and eventually they'd be like, "Who's this fucking little white boy?" And they they catch, <laughs> they'd see him, and they go, "Here he comes again." Yeah. I, I got one good story about one of those. Please. One of one of my buddies came down from uh from San Francisco, a maze, uh, and he was talking shit about LA and thought oh, yeah. it wasn't fucking hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh-huh. like, "I got you, I little love boy." That. Yeah, I got and I went, you. I, 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 got I, you. I went through through Rockwood's neighborhood because I know they were like twenty four seven. They just never left that block, right? Right, right. So. I had, you remember I had that 82 Malibu station wagon? Yep. Yep. Beige exterior, 100% yep. burgundy interior. Yeah. I'd kill for that car. Yeah. So it was, it was a six cylinder. It was running off five and a half. It was yeah. misfiring like a motherfucker. Yeah. And their neighborhood was a hill. Yeah. So I started going up the hill and my car's just like struggling. Yeah. <laughs> and some little fucking dude, it was, it, it 
might have been alloy yeah. just fucking like running up with like a quadruple x fucking uh hoodie on yeah he's like yelling some shit i'm like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> and he That's pulls tight. out he pulls out his shit and he's dumping over the parked cars he's running down the sidewalk and i'm trying to get up this hill and he's like doom, 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 doom. and we're like oh shit and we get to the top and it's like you know like a roller coaster i'm like here we go and there was a little alley at the bottom and a and a fucking uh, an Astrovan pops out of the alley and the fucking side door opens up and he's just like yeah and I'm like Great. I go around I hit the corner I boom and they like turn the corner and then like turned around after a block and then I was like I was like yo you want to go back let's do another round and and, and Mayor's Amazing. like fuck that he's like holding the wheel <laughs> so long story short fucking I'm in county jail a couple years later yeah. and I'm like sitting in some fucking day room and I'm like talking to some dude for that neighborhood and I'm like yo who from your neighborhood has a silver Astrovan he goes I do. No. I was like, yo, I got to tell you a story. Dude. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. Like, uh, I th we probably sorry. thought you were like 18 or something. Like, no, no, no. Like, I was trying to get shot at or something that night. He was like, all That's right, tight. cool. I was like, you did a great job. Like, he was like totally you scared insane. my friend. Yeah. Dude, that is like. That's awesome. No, it's crazy because I was always like trying to avoid that shit. I'm always like, I see, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to like, you know. Oh, you grew up in the city, so it's a little different. It's like, a little different. Yeah. Cause I was, I had a healthy fear of like getting shot at and like yeah. all that shit. So I was like, and then every time I talked to you, it was just like, you were doing something. Like, that's so funny, though. Fucking like, stories. LA's story. bullshit, man. There ain't nothing going on. I'm like, oh, okay, let's go over here. <laughs> it's it's not like, let's bullshit, go, let's go. Let's go lightly breathe on the hornet's nest. And like, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's what it was. You see what happens? Dude. Um, oh, my God. This shit's so funny. Do you know that, um, did you know that uh, Alexis and Finn painted up a, a a snow they had a snowman on set because you know they work on set right right they had a giant snowman as a prop and they painted it picture perfect like a cholo and dropped it off where's the projects down in uh, downtown um aliso village shit i think it was aliso village yeah, yeah. and they, they, they just like imagine you live there and all of a sudden out of nowhere a cholo snowman shows up in december perfect, perfect. like perfectly painted i'm like i i, I just hope that some you're some not family, pictures of that no i don't think they might but I, I hope that some family is like has it and just puts it in storage every year and brings it back out. Oh yeah, yeah fuck yeah. yeah. Someone got it, right? They have no idea like what that you know. I want to see it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll ask Alexis and see if if he um, if he has it. I don't want to watch this man eat. What are you doing? Who is this guy? So graffiti. All right, yeah. let's talk about graffiti. Uh, you know, I was talking about it the other day. I did. Um, you guys ever do VR graffiti? Nope. Okay. Well, well, super analog. I just do the graffiti part. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very, okay, whatever. Go on. You put on a headset. You have these paddles. Oh, shit. Okay. Listen. So now you feel like you're up? Is that what you're going to say? No, no, no. No, 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 fuck, no, no, no. I'm up like a motherfucker right now. No. Listen, I got to tell you. <laughs> right. Eventually, you guys are going to do it at some point. It's going to come across your pants. Uh, you're going to put the thing on. You're going to figure it out. Okay. And you're going to shit your pants. Because it's literally like the only thing that's not in it is like the smell of paint. You can literally like you can paint a piece. Like you're in VR and you're painting a piece and it's like beyond anything you ever imagined as a kid mm -hmm. of what vr is like you can paint a piece you can paint like you guys would pick it up in three minutes and just be like like it's crazy it's fucked up but so you I, climb fences I, walls and shit no, like no, that no, like right on poles or what do you no no you don't have to do that you're just there at the wall you're just like spring you're like pick train you're like at a train yard it's like it's like a video <laughs> game train crazy, yard. but you're in it like it's not like when you play a video game you're like the guy sprays and a piece comes out right right right. you're literally doing the outline you're like here's the outline here's what my silver fuck? feel what uh it's metallic i want still i want gold that's shiny there's shiny gold like it drips a little bit you, does your does your cap clog sometimes the cap like, doesn't, i don't think the cap yeah. clogs no no, no low, low pressure to, can you're like what the fuck yeah, yeah. toss it like scraps <laughs> run out of white you're just um, like all right yeah, yeah but that's you know the it's it's just funny as seeing how far things have come and how they you know somebody figured out how to make it realistic enough now so in like a few years from now there might be just a whole there might be just a whole bunch of writers that are purely on the internet just i was like about to say there's like no graffiti left just everyone's online in the metaverse yeah just in the metaverse just bombing on shit in the metaverse but that's kind of like what a lot of the kids like and i'm not knocking on anyone in particular if you learn that way that's fine but a lot of them got good from that ipad oh they sure fucking draw the guys that sucked their whole life or yeah I can were worse shit all yeah. of a sudden you see their pieces and you're like, what the fuck it's just immaculate it looks because yeah. they pre-drew it up and you know auto corrected it whatever the fuck you call it did all their lines and picture perfect well, they, all, they also started painting after they perfected spray cans yeah, yeah. right like low pressure yeah. like all that shit is right. like you know yeah 
Like you know, we you know you know where I was. You get you get that fucking whatever that watery color of Krylon was. You fuck up and bring it. You're like mm-hmm. fuck hunter green. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fuck. Hunter green. Yeah. You try to suck, film dude. with hunter green. And like oh my god. Only Casey can make it look good. Like yeah. anyone else would just look like dog shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, like gloss three black. guys. It's like Casey, Charlie, and like some other guy could like make it. It's work. almost cheating now. Yeah, you know, it's, right. It's yeah. too easy, man. It, I guess it's like all the other shit, like whatever music or skateboarding, or whatever. Like yeah. everything's like so fucking full blast. And yeah, like everyone's super good. And, yeah, you know, there's that struggle is sort of like missing a little bit. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, man. a little bit. I'm sure there's dudes that are still, you know, stealing Rusto, and that's what they there's should. Some, that's what they should be I doing. Like diehard thugs. I, yeah, yeah. I just think most of it now is not all, but a lot of it is. It's that saturated. It's just. It's not what it was, you know. It's it's corny. But now I love the. Now I have said so, like because in the '90s when I came up, it was all it was like everyone was so hyper focused on like doing you know like I was hanging out crushing them. It's like yeah, do really the good. biggest <laughs> burner you can ever do. Yeah, it's got to be a fucking wild cell melting yeah. your brain. And now I look back and I'm like I should have just been doing throw ups for fucking thirty years because I look at the guys I love are like the guys that can just Tag crush and, throw ups. Yeah. Like the guy that can just do thirty throw ups in a row to me is more valuable than any other fucking guy. You know? Still like tags better than anything. Tags. Are yeah, better. we were in Venice the other nine and like we did these pieces that yeah. I, I like really struggled through and then i call like two fat cap tags and i felt wonderful it's redeemed so, yourself you know <laughs> so much better yeah it's like a release yeah and i'm st- like dude i i'm still rusty i'll go out and catch a tag and it's like they're like the you're, best you're, it's a lost art they don't yeah nobody fucking practices tags you don't yeah. see like kids are walking around fucking you know what i mean you just yeah. see with an ipad pro and just yeah yeah do sucky tags for a couple years then that's that's a better start than than any other fucking yeah do do. fuck yeah do shitty tags for a decade i don't know like it's yeah you know it's fucking crazy like the output the output you have the amount of times (laughs) the amount of times you have to like people like you teach me your feet i'm like a i'm not the one b (laughs) good luck like teach you like right the amount of the amount of wild (laughs) zen output that you have to write like gk or alloy in a row the amount of time you guys have to write to get it Nobody understands how much you have to obsess right. with that. Yeah. It is mind boggling. You could have you could have been you guys could have went to the moon. Right. Yeah. Got- but I think some of that sucky graffiti <laughs> is some of the best graffiti. Yeah. You know, like those are like the the you're like super excited about it. It's like that band you liked where their first album was like a horrible recording. Yeah. But still their best fucking album. Yeah. Yep. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's some, there's something there's something about like that fifth album is just not as much fun as that shitty first one. You <laughs> yeah, know? that's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you know, the you know the concept of graffiti. I was also talking about this too. Is that big Chody? Why is he flicking me off, Chody? Come Dis- on, man. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. Damn, where you from, my son? Damn, I'm <laughs> Um The the concept of graffiti. Like I was thinking about it, and it was like you know, for me, I'll talk about my experience, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was. I don't think. I don't think anyone starts doing graffiti. I'd say the majority of people that start doing graffiti are not doing it because they're extremely happy or sure. like, or life is great. Oh yeah. It's, I it's, think a, it's, it's a pressure cooked anxiety. Right. Then it's, you pop and you fucking ride on walls. Right. It's, yeah. it's, you're frustrated. You're angry. Something's you're feeling something, insignificance. Want some sort of it, permanence. Yes. You know? Yes. You want to know that you, especially exist. in a city like LA where you just like, you know, you're just like lost and there's all these people and they all look the fucking same. Yeah. Like you're just striving to do so- not that you're doing anything that fantastic by yeah. writing graffiti, but you're like, that's that's what's sort of like pushing you in that direction. It's a way yeah. to stick out. Yeah. What about me? Yeah. You know? No, that's huge. It's a way to define yourself and stick out from the fucking multitudes of people who don't yeah. do it. And the people that drive past it every day, they're like, they look the the you know, look the the amount of graffiti writers in the terms of like the amount of people in society, it's gotta be like a no hundredth of a yeah, percent, a spec, right? Yeah. A spec, like a piece of dust. Yeah. But you look, you're driving down the freeway to work, and it's just covered in graffiti. And the and the normal fucking, you know, the the normal person who drives by the um the civilian who sees it is just like, well, I don't know, it's as much as it's spaghetti. like Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're like whatever. Yeah, but to a writer, they're like, oh shit, look who fucking it's got magical. Oh, yeah. 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 And you're like, <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look at the way that shit flares or some yeah. bullshit that no one even cares about. Yeah, and like it, I, I remember graffiti, like you know. I always think about one of those books. It was, um, I was talking about this in the last episode. I think it was in Spray Can Art. It was like, did that dude Noah from New York built like a, yeah. built a giant wooden N? That was Espo's thingy. That was Espo's, Espo's book. Yeah. That was Espo's book. Yeah, okay. a little funny hat on in the picture. Exactly. Yeah. But the, it was like the lid of the N. Yep, yep, and yep. I was like, I remember to this day, I'm still, I, I'm, it's still so hard, hardwired in me that any chance that I have to like brand anything and put my name on anything, it's mm-hmm. two tone. 
if it's right. a fucking email, if it's a if it's an Instagram handle, it turns into a disease. Yeah, but you've only had one name. I've had like fifteen names. You've had fifteen names. So it's like I have my old old friends that call me Gank. Yeah, you know, like the AWRs call me GK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved out of the city. I wrote a different word or two. Yeah, and, and you know, people in Philly know me as something else. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah New York yeah. guys know me as something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's like kind of. But anyone who knows uh, knows. Yeah, yeah. But most, I think most people call me GK. Yeah, most Tim. people call him GK. That's yeah. GK, you guys, and that's Alec. Mm. That's me. Um, and yeah, the thing about graffiti too is that, yeah, I mean, you, it just, it just takes you become upset. I'm, I still have. I thought for sure when I was a kid, I was like, oh, you know, when I'm 30, I'll be like, I'll have a suit and a dog and a picket fence, and my wife will be totally. like, here's your soup, you know, dad, and like, and graffiti will be something I did when I was a kid, and I'm like. I can't. <laughs> Do you remember when you were a teenager and you heard about someone that was like 22 and still around graffiti? Yes. And you're like, you fucking loser. <laughs> no, I was like, get your shit together. I would know. I'd hear a that story was about parents and people that were older would say shit like yeah, that. Like, you know? Yeah. You still do that shit? Well, no, I remember hearing a story about like some guy in New York who pulled up to a writer's bench in a suit and Sick. like, and like a bunch of writers were hanging out and he just like pulled up and like whipped out a marker and tagged their book. And you know, and I was like, whoa. Right. Because I just, you think that these are things that you're going to let go. But the thing is, being. Being that I, if you put all your time into something, anything, right, uh, most times it's going to benefit you in some way, right? Like if you put all your, like, you obsess we, about it, and yeah, we put all. I put there was a time in my life when all I cared about was trying to right. be be good at writing. What the fuck is that? Nothing. I'm good. Okay. Um, <laughs> there was a time in my life when when all of us obviously mm-hmm. were hyper focused on graffiti. That's right. it. Everything else was secondary. Yeah. Work, yeah, yeah. Women. Food. Life, food. Yeah, yeah. Just, I gotta fucking be. And also, then you get in a crew like we're all. And then you get in a crew of guys who are also thinking that way. And we're yeah. all just like, how? Like we're having meetings. There's like a structure. Yeah, how yeah. are we gonna bomb more? Yeah. Who's fucking not getting up? Fucking kick this dude out today. Yeah. The fuck this guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wait, you haven't been getting up lately, have you? Huh? You haven't been getting up. No, I have not. <laughs> am I, about, <laughs> am I coming up? up? Yeah. I mean, Probate, you he's on probation with a V. Yeah. You better watch it. Yeah, you you got to do good. three pieces a week for the next month. <laughs> Fuck. you imagine? 20 tags a week. You get that call. 100 tags hey, a week. Hey, homie. Right, homie. You're on probation. I'm on probation. Yeah. We, we used to do that shit. We used to yeah. have meetings at the fucking park over there on the west side by a motor yard and like talk about who was painting, who's doing what. And like yeah. people will get like. It got it got so fucking weird. It gets a little silly because it's like such like a a lawless, ruleless like yeah. hobby that yeah. like people just want to give a lot of rules to. And other crews, I talk to I talk to Doom, and I'm like because our crew is always like there's always like mini beefs. Always there's always right. something like someone doesn't like so and so. Yeah, there's always someone like three guys that don't like this guy. <laughs> like there's always some shit. Yeah, and like oh, I would fuck. get in the middle for some reason. Maybe it's my personality. I don't fucking know. Then I'd be like, oh fuck him, fuck and like. And I, I always felt like I'm. What did I do? You know, but I'm sure I had a part in it. And, um, but then there'd always be these. And I talked to other guys, and they're like, "That never happened in our crew. We just like we that's because we had a close crew. A lot of these crews in L.A., like OFA, had over a thousand people at one time. Fuck, how was that tight? You know right. I mean? And in in all of MSK's history, you know, we, we've we've either like parted ways or or people moved on. But I I think maybe only like seventy people total has have ever had the right to write MSK. Right. And we have like 50, 50 dudes. Right. You know, a lot of these crews, you know, it's just like a revolving door. You see them up and yes. Like, right. who are these guys? They're, they're good for like two weeks and then they're in a crew and then disappear. And then this guy gets in a crew. And like these, some of these crews have like, you know, they can't say that only 70 people wrote their crew. They have right. like hundreds. Right, right, right. And sure. uh, there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of turnover. So the, I think that helped with our crew and like, you know, we're still, most of us are pretty tight. Some people hate each Fuck other. Fuck yeah. We got, I think it's cool is like we always had integrity. The fact that we do graffiti is a bonus is to aside from you're a good dude, you're a good dude. We we hang right. out, we talk. Oh, we do graph too, and we do good. You know what I mean? Not like how's this graph? Uh let's bring him in, let's get him in. You know what I mean? That's yeah. cool. And you find out dude's a piece of shit like two weeks later and you're like, fuck that guy, you know yeah. what I mean? And we it was couple, never like that, you know. Yeah, I mean, we had a couple happens. that got cast out. I mean, like, but for no the most perfect. part, our track part, record yeah. has never been like Inconsistent. It's been pretty damn consistent. Yeah. It still is throughout the years. And we still I mean? have our, our well, old guys in too. You know, yeah. like a lot of these crews are like you see up a lot. Like I don't know who the fuck they are. And there's the guys that started that crew are like where the, maybe they like they're the old heads at the meeting. They're like telling the youngsters what to do or something. Yeah, I'm making an assumption here. Yeah, yeah. but you don't really see them like active for yeah. like doing their thing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a weird thing creating this like whatever the fuck a society or community. And it's like 
Gang. You know, there was a leader, a gang. Like we, we got there. There is, we went through so many iterations. Like in the '90s, when everything got banged out, like like AWR became like weirdly for a minute. Like we weren't gang banging, but it got weird. Shit got weird for a minute. Well, you know, a couple tough guys. MSK, MSK uh, crew president right here to the left. Um, I will say, I will say that uh, uh, when I was a kid, I'll just say from my perspective, when okay. I was a kid, I. I used to write, I used to write era in Venice until I was at Vision's house when I was really little. And he's like, what do you write? And I was like, I write era. He goes, no, you don't. And I was like, cool. He's like, my homie Thank writes you. that. What do I was write? Like, We're talking to a dude who was like, this, this is where, this is my version of you coming to my house. Like he had an apartment, right? He had framed photos. And for some oh, reason wow. there was like, he had like a tech nine hanging off his fucking in his closet <laughs> for some reason or something. Like mm -hmm. I was like, what is this? This guy is like a, you know, I was like a Serious, little, yeah. yeah, I was like, what is happening? You know? And he's like, you don't write that. And then I was like, okay. Oh, and then my, my homeboy fade was like, you should write two tone. I was like, okay. I just like, and it was, was like, that? He, yeah, that was it. Then yeah. I was like, that was, I was now <laughs> two tone for the rest of my fucking life <laughs> right. from a, awesome. from, from a sentence I exchanged with someone at 15. There you go. And it's followed me. You know, like I mean, you got lucky. Like a lot of people pick a word that sucks, yeah, and yeah, they're yeah, stuck yeah. with that forever. You know, right. yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people like you know those those names where like they don't mean anything. It's like few wearer scar yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like a phonetic, bunch of letters. Phonetic names, yeah, nothing more. <laughs> Car larg, like, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So like I I uh, so that I, I I wrote graffiti and I stopped writing graffiti because I was like I'm gonna make music. And then I met, I was in a Venice high and I met uh Cox and this, this mutual friend of ours was like, I know a guy who does graffiti. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I, cause I always have had this weird ego. I'm like, he's in, you know, I write, like I bomb, you know, I'm like, <laughs> sure. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll go to his, his, his room and get his book for you. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And he gets his black book and he brings it to me and I'm like, Psh. And I open it, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm physically ill. I'm like, what Coach is happening? is really good, man. Yeah. Coach like, is always good. What is happening? What is that? Who, a man did it? Like, completely. <laughs> yeah. And then from then on, I was like, back in, you know? Yeah. And then I'm like, tagging around with, like, I'm hanging out with, with AWR. Like, I hadn't left Venice. Like, right. the first time I left Venice was like, like going to motor with all those guys because they right. lived up the hill by the airport and like right. laps, rave, and Coke. They lived up the hill and they put me in Coke's Lone. Square and Loan. Yeah. Loan was up, yep. Lone was up in, uh, uh, he was up over near uh, the Off outskirts Wilshire. of Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah, Wilshire, yeah. yeah. And so then they would start taking me out and I'd be like, you know, and just bluffing my way through shit. But yeah, I've been to Motor I've never been to Motor yeah, totally. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> and pushing. I would just hang out and I was like the big guy hanging out with all these guys who weren't so big. And like, I, I got in the crew like prematurely because I look back at pieces back then. I'm like, fuck, this shit's embarrassing. But like I got in because I was like the homie. Right. And I was, again, I'm, like a, I'm trying to build the plane as it flies. You know, I'm like yeah, trying yeah, to figure totally. shit out. Like but those are the best times. Man. The best times. Yeah, it's like, the best stuff. I wouldn't take it like people would be like, just do a tag and then add depth to it. And then that'll be a piece. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm doing a wild style. <laughs> nah. Try to paint a piece. And it's just like disaster. For make, like a, make a mess, years. dude. Yeah. Just make a fucking That's mess. Make a mess. Then you figure it out. Yeah. If you were to go back. That was and I, but, but, so I'm trying to get to the to the to the story of AWR, right? So sure, uh, and, we'll, and we'll fill in. I mean, we, I guess we can't full go deep into it, but um, it's the like Cliff Notes. Cliff Notes is Casey started Casey Eclipse started AWR at Culver City High School. In Culver City High School, it was West LA. It was like Read Alert, Sist, Sight, Self, um, Self. Yep some original core members he had the blessing from baba i think who was mm -hmm. like baba was, was a older singer. yeah baba's like 15 years older than everybody I right feel like. baba was baba was the airbrusher for vanilla ice so he was like kind of he literally fan. was he was vanilla ice's airbrusher he was vanilla ice's favorite graffiti writer <laughs> yeah yeah vanilla ice's tour graffiti writer yeah and um you know and like we were like this like you know young startup crew at a time when like we didn't know what AWR was going to be or MSK, right? And I remember like we would look up to like KSN and KSN, TCF sure. and all these guys, mm -hmm. and like the KSN guys of you know like fucking um, what's the fucking dude from Culver City? The, uh, I'm blanking on his name. The legend. Realm the, Rise. No, uh, Finn's Finn's homie. Um, the big dude. The big fucking. Oh, the, Shine. 
Shine. Yeah. Shine was like this big, like he was from, he was, he was a North State Stoners. Yeah. Yeah. State Stoners. And he was, he had, those guys had the best sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. They would like leave notes sharp, for us yeah. and be like, hey, you guys, like, they'd, be like, they'd be like, hey, do you guys, you guys want to bring your Nintendo to the yard and battle us in Mario Brothers? <laughs> and like, I'm like, wait, is he serious? <laughs> should, should we? Like, do we, is there, is there extension cords long enough? <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a crazy time. And uh, I think that, you know, and, I, and I'll, and I'll hand this off to you, but what I think in, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into the, the building of AWR, but what what I will say is that watching a crew get built uh, and also dedicating my life to something, even though it was like not like the most probably healthy thing for me to do, mm-hmm. probably gave me a blueprint for like how to do other things. And not only that, is it those guys that I met when I was 15 to this day have influenced every part of everything I've done in my life. Right. Everything I've ever done has been because so and so from the crew knows this guy from the crew and like right. we can get you an interview over here. Right. Or like that's the only way I've ever done anything. Yeah. And it's just been like And I, I think about that. I think I think, you know, even before I met you guys, I was like thoroughly obsessed with graffiti. So I think I was really, really lucky that I met you dudes. Cause it's like I could have been another crew that sucked or fell apart or turned into a fucking gang or right. Not that I would have, you know, it wasn't really my thing, but um, <laughs> no, I, think I, I didn't grow up tapped, in the hood. I think if someone tapped your inner fucking psycho, <laughs> inner they would have. <laughs> yeah, they could have turned you. Been a woodsider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they could have got you. They could have got you involved. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it could have gone anyway, and 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 we're really lucky. But so like, I think uh, you know, LA crews differ um, in structure to a lot of other cities because we have a. Uh, Everything is fucking gang influenced. Like yeah. whether you, you're on a in a fucking T ball league or a bowling league or yeah, a car yeah, yeah. club. Straight Everyone just up. has like this like gang mentality. Especially in the nineties. Especially. So it's like the fucking the writers did the same fucking thing. So yeah. we have this like like a aggressive, like yeah. serious like you know, on East Coast you can write forty different crews. Right. I mean, granted, I'm in like eight crews now, but like I, I really write one for the most part. Yeah. Um so it's, it's and that's like the that's a gang thing too. It's not like you can be part of like you can be can't be a crip and a blood. Like, right. No, that'd be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't really work so well. Um, I mean, wardrobe would just be like a fucking the wardrobe nightmare. Is a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they they probably do some weird version of that though in New York. Like they got some weird shit going on over there, right? Like it'll be like fucking crips fully like. Rep, like I mean, there are Crips in LA who fully dressed in red as right. like a weird thing. Just, I, just I have fun, that. yeah, yeah. Just for fun, yeah. which is like a funny <laughs> phenomenon if you really yeah. know like LA gang culture. Like I remember Crips in my high school would be like, "Why is that dude wearing a full red like silk short set?" And I was like, "He's on some shit." It's like, do you remember being checked because you had the wrong color shoelaces on? Does that even happen uh, anymore? No. What's what, up? No. What's up? Those dead laces? Yeah. No. <laughs> I remember when I first went to Mark Twain. Uh, these these kids came up to me and they're like what's that in your shoe and i'm like what, what do you mean i was like stone right and they're like what's that in your shoe i'm like what do you mean they're like that part right there i'm like the toe they're like no the part the part right there and i'm like the shoelace and then they all started socking on me oh, i'm like fuck and, and this girl's like you can't say shoelace and i'm like yeah. oh thank you i love that part of the gang culture that the the funny silly words right. like to diss each other this is like in the valley we have uh i'm from the valley the rough part of the valley called calabasas um that's right so it's like we had right right next to it was Canoga Park and Canoga Park had beef with you know Van Nuys, yeah. Barrio Van Nuys. Yeah. And Barrio Van Nuys was bananas. Right. And Canoga Park was cacas. Cacas, yeah. And they would like yell each other, fuck cacas, fuck bananas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bananas. There's some funny Banana. disses for gangs, man. Yeah, There's man. Some fucking Dude, I remember ones. a fight of like Bloods and Crips and like uh, I think Bounty Hunters were Bloods or something. Yeah. But the Crips were yelling. Uh, fuck booty holes. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck booty holes. Like yeah. that's, do you know what you're saying? Like yeah. that's weird, dude. <laughs> they're like, fuck no. <laughs> but they're really aggressive and serious, yeah. you know? Yeah, the dissing, the name dissing. Even, well, that, like to your point, it extended into graffiti because they would diss West Coast artists and call them wet toast artists. Yeah. Right? yeah. And they would be like, there's always a diss. Yeah, I don't something know they, that rhymed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> What about gremlins? Remember when, when, didn't the gremlins rob a fucking candy shack off of a high school at one point? When I robbed a newsstand. A newsstand? <laughs> yeah. I was just, I, dude, I, I was listening to one of your, your shows before and you're talking about like uh, the availability of smut nowadays. Oh yeah. And getting like a sliver of a paper that yeah. has like some weird bush on it. And yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. like, it's on. Yeah, yeah. You know? One tit and you're yeah. like, oh fuck. Dude, I remember robbing a newspaper stand when I was like 14 or something. And, uh, <laughs> 
having this many pornos on a skateboard. Oh, the, yeah. the stack of pornos like taller than I was. It's Valhalla. And like Vintage. pushing it like it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to lose five pounds. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna crank to every page in every magazine. Like you didn't even really like it. It's just like this is weird. I, yeah. That's all right. Cool. Yeah. It's like that. It's like that illicit smut you find in a fucking in the trash can in the fucking woods. I gave you guys a cliff notes on on the crew called uh, AWR. You might want to know what does it stand for. Originally, it stood for All Rights Reserved. That's right with a W, as in writer. All Rights Reserved. That's another it. wall rocked. Always rocking. Mm -hmm. Our work rebels. Angels will rise. Angels will rise. Anal wart remover. There mm -hmm. you go. Um, you know all that good shit. Now. Some at some point in the late '90s, I want to say maybe early aughts, we were like our crew. Um, our crew was bulging. We had a lot of fucking prospects and a lot of people, and uh, you know I'm sure it was Casey came up with the idea Eclipse, and he's like, "Hey, we need to start a, a minor league, right?" You're off on dates. I'm definitely yeah. off. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> what are the dates? I got an MSK summer '92. Oh, fucking early. Yeah. I was oh the first God. person in MSK, like the first, like of the, 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 whatever MSK turned into. So like Baba thought of the name off right. of the old punk band. From, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't active in 92 though. Not really. Like, I think they thought it was you cool. You were in I as think like they, a funny. No, they thought, they thought that Mad Society Kings was a cool sounding name yeah. and only Eclipse and Baba really wrote it. And yes. then Baba didn't really write too much anymore. And, and Casey was like, um, he wrote, but he was more of like our, our mentor. Right. And I, I kind of sucked at graffiti. Yeah. But I did a lot of graffiti and I was yeah. in good spots. Yeah. And I think he kind of like took me under his wing. Saw the potential. And I really wanted to write NBR, but I, there's no way. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. guys were just fucking light years ahead of me. Yeah. So I wrote MSK and right. then we sort of built that. And then it came to that point where like MSK was getting bigger. And then like, well, why don't you guys just all get an AWR? I was like, well, we've already sort of made a crew at yeah. this point. Well, like, that was the decision. Yeah. That, and that was like 93. Four. It's called. It's guess. called a pimp choice. Now, pimp choice. Yeah. now instead of it being the June, this is the this is the thing that's funny that none no one in AWR saw coming. The thing that was funny was that instead of A instead of MSK being a feeder team to AWR, GK was like, "Why don't we make MSK as hard as fucking nails?" <laughs> and and like and MSK became the new generation, and MSK became bigger than AWR. And I think a lot of people. Don't know what AWR is, but they know what the fuck MSK is. Yeah. And MSK is like MSK was like from a thing where like I remember, I remember painting MSK pieces and be like, I'm gonna help these guys out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do a little. Or you guys we'll do a saw and give some points. Yeah. Or like like we we try like tag along and go to the AWR meeting. There'd be like three or four MSKs, and they're like, you guys need to stand over there. Yeah, we made you could be at the meeting. Yeah, and you we're like, go wait like, outside. What do we do? <laughs> like we're just we're, like just wait for them to oh, cross over shit. again. You know, <laughs> that's Dude, awesome. It's so, it's official so, business. You guys gotta stand over that bench. Yeah, we're so official. We're like all in the room talking about painting and shit. You're like, you guys can't come in here. Like what? Like it, it's so funny. Like it also is like a young man, like full of all this like weird anxiety and insecurity. You're like, I want to be a part of this thing. I want to so be bad. And you're yeah. like, you can't come in yet. You know. But it was like it was like that was a structure. So like AWR learned from KSN. Yeah. You know, KSN always stayed a really tiny crew. I don't know if there's like more than 15 dudes that ever wrote that crew. Yeah, 20 yeah. crew at tops. Yeah. You know, so like they didn't want to be the, the biggest crew and they were all buddies. I guess they all lived in an apartment together and shared underwear or something, you know, yeah. like, and then AWR was like, all right, that's what's up, you know? Yeah. So it's like, there's that lineage right there. Yeah. And uh, I think MSK, like AWR for better or worse, like there were street writers, like read and alert, like caught a bunch of tags and might like yeah. bomb. But for the most part, it was like, you know, Venice, Motor, Huntington, Huntington Beach, when that oh, was yeah, going yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, West LA, just in general, Yeah, you know? Um, and then like the Valley guys that got in, but then like MSK sort of spread, you know, we got a couple of East LA guys, yeah. South Central. When we got like guys in South Central, we're like, oh shit, dude, that's yeah. like, that's like another fucking world. You yeah, know? yeah. Like it's not Calabasas for no. sure. And then, <laughs> you know? it, yeah, and then this? you had to, yeah, yeah, this is for you guys. You and me? then the, um, I always think too, like the impact that, you know, Agura, like things that happen in Agura, like the impact just like someone like Fate and Chunk had in Agura. Yeah. Because Fate came from the boys' home, right? Yeah, he's, he's originally from like Inland Empire. Right. right. Owner or and Chunk, yeah, and like Chunk was from uh, Clanton, right? So he yeah, was, yeah, his family was. But he was, what was he doing up in fucking Agura? His mom tried to get him out of the hood. His mom tried to get him out of the hood. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best thing. Yeah. The parents are trying, like, we're going to send you somewhere great. Like, we're going to send you somewhere safe like Agura. And instead of, instead <laughs> of. Take of, advantage uh, of it, yeah. yeah. Instead of Agura <laughs> changing them and making their lives better, yeah. they made everyone's <laughs> lives in Agura bad. I think that's how gangs spread anyway. Yeah, that's you know? right. 
like, like, they like turned the entire city to crime. <laughs> like, like one one dude from 18th Street moves to Minnesota. Oh, and it's yes, like click out there. You yeah. Know? Uh, Yo, fuck. I remember. I remember when American Me came out and Chunk and Fate moved to Agora, and I swear to God, in two weeks, everyone was a fucking cholo. Then yeah. Gremlin, then then full started Gremlins. Game. It's all a joke, right? It's all a fucking joke. Yeah. Oh, let's start a funny game called Gremlins, and all of a sudden, like, ah, oh, this is funny. Hey, let's 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 jokingly buy some twenty twos. Huh? Yeah. Hey, let's do a drive by. Like, yeah. what the fuck is happening? Smoke rock, right? Yeah. yeah, let's smoke some crack. Like, it's yeah. all fun. Like, we're, dude, we're in the suburbs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> like, and Chunk would be like, "Hey, fool, he has like, um, dude, he had he had he had the he was the earliest dude I ever knew scamming." Blank credit cards. Like yeah, this yeah. is like ninety <laughs> fucking five. Pushing cards. We just talking about this yesterday. Yeah. yeah. The we just first had this conversation. Right. That fool was scamming. Like counterfeit. I mean, not to blow him up. Counterfeit money. Blank yeah. credit cards. Like we had mad counterfeit money. Mad but, going. Yeah. He's like you know, <laughs> it. Yeah. it was shitty counterfeit money because the only place you could use it was like a strip club. You right? couldn't get it wet. It's just yeah. like bled. A fucking yeah. pizza joint. Yeah. 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 Fuck. Dog shit counterfeit money. Yeah, there are always like things like you put like a uh, baby powder on it and crumple it up a little yeah. bit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It only works in like black light in the dimmest room. <laughs> yeah. Really, possible. really slick about it. Yeah. Just throwing it at someone's butthole is the only uh, way it ever makes sense. Yeah. But like liquor stores that won't really work. Like dudes would be like, oh nope. Yeah. But we get like you know a few hundred dollars like a homeless dude and right. he's like it's fucking oh, dude thank <laughs> you cruel, jesus the dude cruelest, the cruelest joke they're still doing fed time <laughs> yeah so they tried to use it um no it's just crazy man it's crazy to see how you know all that shit the way the way shit spread and like the way the way different neighborhoods interacted and the way like you know you put you put someone you know we have this organization of people and you add in like you know you add in another dude and it changes the fucking structure fucking yeah. elements is Right, but we yeah. were really conscious of that. Like there, like there was a couple snakes that that snuck in, yeah, and they didn't last the whole time, no, you know. No. But we did have like like different like lifestyles. Like there's like, you know, like hood kids, rich kids, yeah. in between, yeah. different nationalities, yeah. different backgrounds, yes. dudes from different hoods, yeah, you know, like all and like it's sort of like a little melting pot, and it it was there's dude from different neighborhoods in our crew, yeah. I mean, Rebel was a fucking blood, and he yeah. just come to my house in Venice all the time, and I'd be like. I'd be like, what are you doing? He'd be on a red scooter with a red helmet with a bull's jacket. And he'd come yeah. to my house and there's like show line upstairs. I'm like, are you, f I'm like, you're going to get me fucking shot. Yeah, yeah. He'd be like, you know, it's just how he got down, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was wild. It was just, and it was interesting too, because like everyone who got in our crew, you see this, like our crew at the time, like I'm, you know, not for nothing, but like, I think, I think at one point we probably MSK and AWR more MSK was probably one of the best graffiti crews in the whole world. Right. I would say. I mean, in my humble opinion. In my, I mean, I'm, I yeah. think objectively. Like, I'm not even saying because I'm in it. Like, right. I'm saying, no, like, of course. I, I think we're the best, but I think anyone that's in their own career, they probably should think that they're the best. Everyone should think they're the best. Um, and I'm sure there's like people have done more, people have done better, but I still think we're the best. I think there was a moment yeah. where it was held. Like, I think that that, let's say there's, mm -hmm. let's say there was an award show. Yeah. Different people have had that at different times. Yes. Yeah. Right. Agreed. I think there was definitely a moment that, that, you know, that, that we had that. But, um, you know and uh yeah i mean it, it's 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 just interesting like the different you know like and then and then you and then remember i remember when crush came in right it was just like you guys he was like uh, the old head yeah but it was like yeah. yo crush from ksn is wants to be in <laughs> he was more technical he was cleaner. Yeah. yeah and the whole crew changed after that everyone's fucking it was a great influence the yeah. crazy like yeah. no one was painting like that yeah. that full game he goes no 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 he goes Tuzan, you got to paint. You have to do a thirty foot piece. I'm like, what are you? He's like, you're painting too small. I'm like, what are right. you saying? You know. Well, that was another thing. It's like I I had good influences in graffiti. You yeah. know, it's like if I got in some shitty crew in the valley or whatever, like maybe I'd still suck and maybe I would still be. I would have never moved on past that. Like I was really lucky, you yeah. know, to be around you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and 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 it's also like you don't know that, you know, like nobody knew that this like. You as like this little scrawny kid who's like running around with all his energy was gonna end up doing what he did, you know? Like you yeah. just don't know what what who's gonna do what. Right. Who's gonna turn into like, you know. And I always say, like, I think one of the biggest curses in the world is being really good at graffiti because you kinda can never stop. Well, I it's yeah. Addicting. Well that's right? a, that's a, like you know how like we used to like uh, diss someone that only like bombed for a summer or something? Like, yeah. oh whatever, they were out for like two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Part of me is like, oh, they're free. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah, like, yeah, I have yeah. this like, like weight on my shoulder forever. Yeah. You know, right. like like the the guy I used to ride with in in the nineties, Juice. Yeah, you know, he was like oh, super yeah. great at skateboarding. That was your fucking was like in skate videos. And then like we crushed. We went practically all city for like a you summer. Heavens. You guys were running all that for shit. A minute. You little kids. And then kids. he was like done. Yeah, done. He had something happened, right? He had some. Sort he of got like, a really, really, really good job and career. Oh, yeah. I thought he got like shook somewhere, somewhere along the line. I mean, he got, I think a, a few people got shook because I got in so much trouble. 
Yeah, you got. And they're just like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that that sounds. I think horrible. that was a warning sign when you you know GK was the first guy that we all knew who like went to the penitentiary for graffiti. We're like, we'd all got arrested, and it was like, you get a ticket, you. Well, do it became a service. felony. Like the penalties just got worse and worse and worse. And yeah. then what I got. <laughs> In my trouble, like it was the worst, but then guys after me got in more trouble who yeah. even did like less graffiti. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah. I mean, that, that dude's psych got like seven years yeah. or something, six Fucked years, whatever the fuck it was, Fucked and up. did like five of them or something. Like, I'm, no. I might be off on the numbers, but it was way more than I did. Yeah. Sight from where? South Central. Oh. Yeah. Black? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's part of it, too. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> he's a cool kid. Well, you say that, up, but like when I got in trouble, stick. part of the reason why they wanted to, to give me so much they want, fuck because they they're like, you know, every time like a writer got busted in like, they're like, oh, you're just picking on a Mexican or black or whatever. Yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah. we got a white one. Yeah, yeah. From you're a the nice neighborhood. Out. They wanted to <laughs> We can a- give them whatever time we want and we're not going to get any backlash. Yeah. You know? I remember too when when he came out of jail, it was like, I remember like the first night he came out and he was he was like, dude, you were, it took you a minute to you warm up. You were the up. first black hand I shook. Right, right. In like a year and a half, two yeah. years, something like that. You were fucking weird. You were just like. It was weird. Like you're in like a, like a. <laughs> Like you're, it's like sensory and everything. Like you're in this cold, dark, stinky, hard, awful place. Yeah. It's like, like this living room is magnificent compared to a jail cell. Yeah. You know, like it's all hard surfaces and yeah. loud, the clinks and the, the smells and like, it's Terrible. like a sensory overload. So yeah. it's like you pop out the other side and like, you're like, oh, it's like you can smell foods and like, you know, different trees and flowers and stuff. Like yeah. you're so fucking limited in jail. Like yeah. your world is this fucking big. Yeah. You know? So and, it's, it's and a, you it's have a to shock. operate within that new microcosm and like play by those rules. All those stupid fucking rules about yeah. the racism and the cars and the, yeah, all right. these like associations. Like it, it, it fucked me up. Cause like my crew's interracial. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I kind of had to like keep that to myself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. no, you got. to I'm just like, please. yeah, you know, there's like other people in yeah. my crew. You know? No, you like, had to, you had to, you had to fucking, wood, you had to wood the fuck out to get through that. I mean, but that was that was hard, man. It's like, you know, you dude, have to like, I can't, I can't and imagine. you meet those guys that they 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 make that transition and they you know they start. Remember we talked about it back in the days, like a, a white dude from like, you know, Reseda goes to prison and all of a sudden he has a country accent. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what's up, brother? Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> you didn't even talk like that before, you yeah, know? Yeah. And like, but it happens with all like the other races too. Like, yeah. like super, dudes get super gnarly, like to yeah. join Southside or whatever the fuck it is, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah. they join that culture. Yeah. Some people are trapped. I, we got friends that are, you know, they've been out for like 10, 15 years. They're still walking the yard in their mind. Right. Yeah. You know, like they're like, check it out, homie. Yeah. You're like, chill the fuck out, dude. Yeah, like, chill out. We, yeah. like you live a wonderful life like yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. that's behind you you yeah. know it takes a lot to realize like how i don't know for me personally it's taken a lot to realize you know i didn't do any significant jail time i get arrested a few times and i i got i once i did it like a couple couple nights in jail here and there i was like oh this fucking where did sucks. you do a couple nights like uh i got the Culver most city yeah in uh Culver city i was in like a holding tank for, like four days like i get arrested a couple times you know but like but like i it's all for painting yeah that no no no, no. that was for drugs sex, was, sex yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's for drugs and tricking sex tricking yeah <laughs> yeah sex sex uh sex acts no yeah that was for drugs but i but the thing was the only thing that bothered me was like you the, the true lack of freedom and like being under the thumb of like some fucking idiot who's like don't you know who's like outside telling me what to do and like i can't look at you know, yeah it's like, yeah i trip on dudes they're like i don't even care if i go to jail and yeah. i'm like what the fuck is some wrong like with it. you dude? they're into it well yeah they they get i know the dumb word institutionalized but it's like they don't it's for some people it's easier like they yeah. don't gotta think they get fed they got shelter they don't gotta take care of their kids like that's right, it they don't take care of anything you know it's, it's all, everything's, everything's done for up. them dude right. you know but for other people like like i've always moved around so much so to be confined on like one dorm or cell or yard it's That's just awful. fucking cr- soul awful. crushing dude what about you alloy you ever get picked up for anything significant and do some yeah for a graph, for um, a graph. you go through county well for other shit yeah but it was i ended up beating it and it was the same guy that i'm not even gonna say his name that got a lot of our other guys and it was fucked up the dude was a pile of shit you know what i mean and the cop or the ex the, the, no the cop okay no um like it was you know, one, when I got my it, was, ho- it was one cop that was focused on getting everybody all of us yeah, yeah. Like so a yeah. detective like a vandal squad yes i don't even know what this fucking title right. was but they raided my house and they went to my union job oh my mom's oh, house I remember this. they went yeah. to my apartment they went to my union hall like all within four different places and they pulled out my my picture. Homeland Security was there too at my oh, job yeah. site, and they had a picture of me. And they said somebody broke in this guy's apartment. We need to talk to him. Do you know where he's at? We want to we want to make sure he's safe. 
Yeah. And I just got transferred the day, like two days before, literally to another job site, thankfully. And I got a phone call from the truck, the driver, one of the drivers, he's like, yo, sheriff's here. I think they're looking for you. And um, as soon as that happened, then my phone went off and my neighbor downstairs in my apartment, he goes, hey, hey, Holmes. He goes, hey, big dog, there's like, there's like 30 sheriffs in your pad and they got a U-Haul and they, 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 he goes, they taped off the corners, they didn't, like, they blocked it off, right? And I was like, what the fuck? And then my mom calls me, he goes, what the fuck? They're here. Um, it was just shit. Does that shit. still happen? For fucking graffiti. All now. this, bro. It was nah. crazy. It was what fucked up. graffiti is legal right now? It seems that way. Nah, I mean, they we're talking, yeah. this is a lot of wild this back. Yeah, they 90s it, was rough, man. Yeah, like, Homeland for, for Security. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Homeland Security for fucking yeah. graffiti. Like, it talk was, about a misuse of fucking funds. I remember they, 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 um, they also raided one of Aaron's uh, shops, right? Aaron Levant, and they're going for revoke. Right? Oh, right, right, right. They're, I was already out of LA at that point. Yeah, was, like, they got revoked. They got you. They got a Ryan, couple guys. I think they're looking for him. Yeah. That was the same yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 And and revoke went to jail for a minute too. Right. Yeah, he was in jail. A couple of weeks or so. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was like, dude, motherfuckers are going to jail. Like, and you know, and and that shit works because you know what happened? Graffiti dried the fuck up. Yeah, it got you did. really, really it did. slow at that for time a bit. too. Yeah. yeah, they were finding. Uh, like commercial buildings, mom and pops, if they didn't have a permit for the mural exposing the free advertisement oh, yeah. on the wall, yeah. they, you had to fill out a form, put your name, what yeah, they call you, and take fine, it to city yeah. hall or some bullshit, stamp it, give it yeah. to the owner. So if the cops come, you got to show them that. But now it seems it's, like you can do it the fuck you want. Oh, it's a free for all. It's a free for all. I was talking to Sita and. Um, I listened to that one, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I'm like, it's pretty much like open season. It's like, dude, they barely even fucking slow down. You know, yeah. remember yeah, it was like that. Man. Remember when it was like that in San Francisco in the nineties? Oh fuck! And dude. we would all go out there, and it was like, yo, they don't even care. <laughs> yeah. They'll put the spotlight on you, and be like, nice yeah. work. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fun. Dude. Graffiti writers paradise, man. Um, is there anything that you, if you were to go back, because I know what I would do for myself. I would not get caught. No. Would no. you? Is <laughs> if I do that reminds me of the I, I, the, the the time when you had just gotten out of jail. I think for a day or two. Right. Literally. Right. We all go to Motor Yard. We're all painting Motor Yard. Every like there's like twenty of us in Motor Yard. Right. I'm painting right next to you. Chunk is at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Chunk comes running. Oh, and the cops right And he's like, yeah. and it's like <laughs> cops are hopping over the wall. Yeah. And at first you're like, uh huh, whatever chunk. And then like and then you see them. And it's like so dramatic. Like there's a huge long tunnel <laughs> yeah. and you see the uniforms coming and we all fucking bail. Everyone gets away except for fucking him. Oh great. The one guy who had the most on the line, they, yeah. and I was—I I don't think so, I went to jail that day, though. I you think, didn't? I don't think so. They got you though. I remember, like I was—I yeah. was up at the gas station and like talking on a, I think I don't know if it was a cell phone or a payphone, but like talking, I was like, "Fuck, they got GCAS. Fuck." I think I, I felt got so bad. caught twice there, and then I got caught. You know where the freight trains sort of live forever further down the tracks? Yeah, I got caught there too. While I was on parole, I got caught at that. While spot. you're on parole, Oof. yeah. The last month I was on parole, I got caught four fucking times. It, see, that's the thing. Damn. You couldn't stop. You couldn't and, uh, fucking stop. And two weeks after, well, I got I got arrested in Cincinnati. I got arrested in Portland. I got arrested in Ensenada. Well, no. And I got arrested in West LA all in the same month. And I was about, with you. We got arrested in, it was in TJ? They no, like I was in Ensenada. I was with this uh, San Diego rider. They're at uh, Skull. Fuck. Skull. Skull. Did, they, did they make you go to the ATM? Dude. I went to the ATM. <laughs> oh, tell that story. Yeah. People yeah. need to know how that works. In, in, okay, so in I'm 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 out of jail. I'm working at American Apparel downtown when they first started. They didn't have all the stores yet. Right. Uh, I, were, I was personal assistant that dude, uh, Dub Charney. No. Yeah. That's a whole other. That's a whole fucking episode. Dude. <laughs> you were his personal assistant. <laughs> yeah, because we knew that girl that worked there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's like, I can get you a job. I was like, cool. And like, I was supposed to be his assistant, but I didn't know how to use a computer or anything. Like, and I ended up doing like a sales and customer service. But, um, so I, the homies were going down to Ensenada to paint. I had to work that Friday. I was like, look, I'll, I'll meet you guys down there. That's just a small town. I'll figure out where you guys are, right? Right. So I drive down to San Diego. I pick up this guy's skull. We go to Ensenada. It's like late at night. I don't know where anybody is. I was like, I'm just gonna blaze a bunch of tags. These guys know where I am, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's like, I'm blazing like it's fucking legal, like fat cap, silver tags on black stuff, like just like fucking going for it, right? Yeah. Hop in the car. Uh, there's a car behind me, like making this weird sound. Like it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a siren or a horn. It's just like I don't know if the car's breaking or something. And <laughs> sounds they, like a garbage disposal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I think we got pulled over. Yeah. It's a fucking two door Toyota Tercel. Yeah. And the guy walks up to my window and he starts speaking Spanish. I don't know what he's saying, but he says Pintora. I know what that word means. Yeah. And he's like, you I'm like, no, no, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. 
and he like reaches in my car and pops the trunk and he like gets the can. He's like, Pintura. And I'm like, so he gets me out of my car. They put us in back to their cell. We go to this fucking really, really gross little jail. It's filthy. <laughs> it's me and this nasty. other guy, this guy's white too. And we're just sitting in this fucking cell for fucking forever. There's fucking, um, am I allowed to say trans people? Did I answer that too? There's some trans it. people in there with sequin yeah. dresses. No way. And they're really uh, not, you know, you don't think they're a woman. Yes. Like they're clearly men. Right. They're big. Right. The room I'm in is really small. There's no toilet. There's a hole in the corner for toilets. <laughs> all, the, all the pieces are like trying to holler at the trans dudes. Yeah. <laughs> um, they pull the guy I'm with out after we've been in there like four or five hours. I'm sweating because I'm still on parole in California. I'm like, I'm gonna just never going to get out of jail. This is it for me. Like right. I'm going to stay in jail in Mexico for a while. And then they're going to take me to LA. I'm going to stay in jail forever there. And uh, fuck. so they pull him out. They, they throw him back in the cell. He's like, look, man, they, they, uh, they told me I can get out uh, if I just gave him like 600 bucks, but I told him, no, I'm gonna stay with my friend. I'm like, you don't have $600. <laughs> like, that was like a moot point. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that le they let us in there for longer and they pull me out. And they're like, look, we're, we wanna help you out. I go, I, great, let's, let's do it, you know? So they drive <laughs> me to a fucking ATM. It's like a purpose-built building for an ATM, like a little hut, right? Yeah. And I walk in there and somebody took like a, like a gallon bag of diarrhea yeah. and they <sighs> splashed all over the ATM. Nice. Yummy. And I'm like looking at it, I'm mm. like, I, I still need to use the ATM, but I'm like, it's covered in fucking diarrhea. <laughs> and Fuck. so I was like, I walk out, I was like, yo guys, the, the, they're like, we got another one, we got another one, let's go to another ATM. Right? So we go to another one up. and I'm about to go in, I'm like, how much do, you, how much do I get for you guys? And they're like $600, I was like, all right, cool. Go to the ATM, it's all in pesos. I'm like 600 pesos and they come back out and I'm like, here, he goes, keep that shit down. We're trying to help you out. We're not supposed to do this. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're helping me out. <laughs> yeah. They're like, this is like $40. I was like, well, I don't know how much fucking peso this is in cash. Yeah. I was like, I just like maxed out my card. It was probably like 300 bucks or something. I mean, yeah, yeah. so they're like, all right, now we're gonna take you to a judge. We go to this like real weird nondescript building in the middle of the night. I like walk down all these like hallways. I don't know where the fuck I am, it's dark. I go in this like office room and there's like this old head that's like talking shit to me in Spanish. And, and then he goes, guilty or not guilty? I go, guilty? He's like, okay, never come back to my country. <laughs> so what I'm like, great, I'm out of here, fuck? dude. And so like they drive us back to the fucking jail into my, in my car, mind you, I'm sitting in the backseat of my own car. They're driving They're, your car. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> I had a 97 Ford Taurus, right? Sick Uber. That's so we cool. go back to the fucking jail. They, they, my friend's there. They, 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 they're like, see you guys later, go back to America. I'm no like, shit. all right, see ya. And I get in my car. And I turn on my music and the one death metal tape that I had that I didn't even know was still in the car is in the tape deck. So they're driving around like, and it's not a listen to death bumpy, metal. Huh? And they stole, they stole all my granola bars that were in the center console. Motherfuckers. So I was like, I'm going straight back to fucking America, right? We go back to San Diego right away. We sleep for a few hours and I drive back into Mexico the next morning. And uh, I like ran into my, they were painting a legal wall. Wait, what? You went back? I went back the next day. You're so fucking psychotic. And I did a piece. No. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. And you uh, go back. I went back the within hours. Is fucked up. Yeah. Dude, this, dude, you're a fucking nut. Why did you, why did you keep painting after you're on parole? Why couldn't you stop? Well, that's why I left LA. Right. You know, like, cause I knew, like, after that last month of me getting busted all those times, um, four times, four times, I was like, I'm, like I'm not jail sucks You're burnt. for yeah. me. Like 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 a white kid from the suburbs who can't really fight that well. Yeah. Who who's writes not, graffiti? Who's not gigantic? You know. Who's also right. taking all the oxygen from the other inmates? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I, I, that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a I'm in a room with like a hundred dudes. Yeah. Three of us are white. Oh, yeah. The two other guys are tweakers. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. so it's like you know like fuck fish out of water. It's like really. But your really answer your answer isn't. They never crossed your mind to be like, I have to stop doing graffiti. It's like, I got to move to another place to do more graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what what's was. crazy. That's yeah. like, that's why, like, dude, that's like, I, I, you know, I got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. If I want to, like, I had to make a choice. I was like, I either going to like write graffiti or like try to do something else in my life. Well, and you I remember everyone became like a graphic designer. Yeah. Absolutely. That was the job you, you yeah, got as a graffiti writer. My, of course. Absolutely. I could learn Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole, the, the whole crew's like on computers. Right? I'm like, gonna do logos for the rest of my life. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Which is like you know not the coolest fucking thing to do. But one to three hundred dollars a pop. You're gonna live that way for the rest of your life. Hundred percent. Yeah. I was like, dude. I, th as soon as I can figure out, as soon, dude. I, I was shitty at that for so fucking long. And as soon as I got, listen, I remember when Cokes got a computer. He got an Apple computer, and I'm like, what do you, what do you need that for? 
He's like, I'm gonna do graphics. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no fucking idea. And yeah. I'm like, he had this giant beige computer, Sick. and he's just like, blah 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 blah, like using Photoshop and like, you know, just putting every filter on a piece, and stretching it, and I'd right. be like, like yeah, printing it out, and I'm like, this is my piece, like, mind fucking blown. Next thing yeah. you know, he's like, run, he's like at fucking uh, Gat or at fucking yeah. Third Rail. He's just like Gat. doing graphics, like, just going off. Yeah, and we're just like, I'm just trying to catch up a little bit. Yeah, you know, like and. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think the dream for a long time was like my dreams as a kid was like my first dream was like I could maybe be a plumber or a roofer. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wait a minute, I could be I could maybe be my second dream I was I was I had was to be a tattooist. Right. But it seemed impossible. I was like, there's no way I could. I remember you doing that. Yeah. Right. And I was like, I had an apprenticeship. Like this is actually I didn't apprentice till after I did some other shit. But like I was like teaching myself how to draw tattoos. And like I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then like. And then I started doing like graphic shit and, and like I went back to school because I dropped out and everything and like started got seeing, back into sex work. Got back into sex work, yeah. Sex, sex, work, sex work for all the work. years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well that's what that's how I've stayed afloat this whole time. Yeah. yeah. Let me it's ask good. you, so when you were when you decided perfect. like I'm gonna put this down and kind of go this route. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the last burn? I'm not talking like peace throw up, I mean burner you did like fucking that went up I gave it my just... everything. <laughs> You remember you did that piece of Belmont and I dissed that shit? No. You did that Because you, yes. you ripped my shit up. I had, I had a Chevy piece, which was one of my other words. And I did these like, uh, I don't know, these like honeybee type filling. Uh -huh. And I think you like, you did a piece a week after me and you were like, honeybee filling. What? No, I never yeah, did Yeah, it didn't say two-tone. We talked about this before and you're like, I never knew who dissed that shit. What did it say? It wasn't like, it was like a job. Oh. It said like a weird word. It was on the main wall of Belmont. Oh, I had like a I had like a job and I painted a, a fake piece for it. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, I have no. I honestly it was like completely nothing there. Yeah. like no remem remembrance yeah. of that. I hear I, I smoked a lot of those memories away too. Yeah, a fucking honeycomb feeling. Oh yeah. man, I remember the one you're talking about. It's red and gray, right? Yeah, White the, outline. The Chevy piece was decent. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. It was and, good I, one. and it was in, and the Chevy piece was at Belmont too, and I painted next to it. Mine was to the right, and then you painted to the left, and I was like. Hmm, someone's paying me to do yeah. a piece. Let me just knock this one off. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, idea right really? here. You could have dusted out my outline and just like use that. Dude, I don't even remember doing that. I did have this really weird job where I would like paint murals for this um for some show on fucking NBC where it was like a it was like a it was like a crime show where they would like solve a crime 20 years later mm -hmm. so like i'd do a mural and then i'd repaint the mural as like an aged version of it i just like figured right. it out like i did this wild like malcolm x mural with like american flags all this babies and shit in it and then i did it 10 years later like mm -hmm. and i was like so happy to be working that like they were probably paying me like 300 dollars, right <laughs> Tops. like for me to yeah. fucking destroy myself to do this piece i remember that job you had for that movie set it off that was that was when legit. you did gang blocks yeah. acorn projects what? in north hollywood yep. Yep. yeah <laughs> that was legit. you know about that mm -hmm. like queen latif is like hanging out in the hood she's like all yep yep like got a wife beater on her corn rolls and yep. says acorn yep. behind her. acorn projects i got sweated i was that was in the valley and i got yeah, north i hollywood. got pressed yeah and i was like i'm painting for a i'm doing it for a movie he goes i don't give a fuck i was like <laughs> I was like, I love that answer for everything. You're yeah. like, I have all these reasons. They're like, yeah. You're like, I'm nah. in your neighborhood because I'm doing a movie. He's like, I don't give a fuck. And I was like, listen, you guys need to do something because I'm not about to get shot because I'm fucking yeah. painting. Oh, they just left you hanging right there. Just do they your thing. Go, we'll come back and they record. They were like, with. go paint. I was by <laughs> myself. Up. That's fucked up. In the middle of the fuck, you know, like the valley's wild. There's some yeah. fucking pockets. And, was, uh, uh, yeah, it was an old neighborhood right there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, and I, yeah, that was funny. And those blocks sucked. I wish I, would. man, if I could go back, if I could go, the only the, the one thing I would do is if I could go back and reset my graffiti time, it would just be like, just fundamentals for like seven yeah. years. Just fundamentals, dude. That's seven it. years for me, yes, <laughs> because I tried to go forward too far, too fast, and like I was trying to like keep up with like all these and like. I, I had to go back four years in. I had to reset and start teaching myself how to tag and do bubbles again because I was trying to do ill shit. Yeah, right. but your shit was ahead of its time. Your fucking pieces were yeah, I'm you're not good for a little bit there here, but they're badass. Yeah. They're, I think I did like you a, had a couple. few years. You're, you're you're good, good, man. Again. Yeah, you were couple. active. Well, it's, it, the thing is, is like you were active and like that's how you work out active. the kinks. Yeah, you yeah, know, like yeah. I don't paint regularly enough. Where like I, you know, I do a piece now. It's a little wonky or something. Yeah, but I think but about you, painting like every week. Yeah. You know, that that takes care of that. You know. Yeah, but you hit the threshold. There's a threshold where you get to where like you're I'm allowed to do busted stuff. No, it's not busted because even, <laughs> your, even your worst day is still better than sure. most because you've done it so much right. that you're like you get over this hump and it's like I can still have an off day and fuck up. You yeah, can't. it gets a little automatic. Yeah, it's automatic. Yeah. You can't fuck up. You've got it. Like you've got the thing down. Yeah, you know? which is like that's the mark of someone who's you know 
it turns into a craft yeah it's a craft you're a yeah. king you know and like i just felt i feel like when i look at it you know i've been digging through all this old graffiti for like a, going through all this pavilion stuff i hate you about that right yeah. trying to find all pavilion pieces and like looking at it i'm like did you know how many good pieces did i do how much good you know there's a lot of bad shit yeah and a lot of bad shit in there and like i'm just like you know yeah but only you know it's bad because other people see it in there. I mean, you guys, you guys, all, you guys yeah. know it's bad too. But everyone's making fun of it. Yeah, yeah, he'll make fun of it. Yeah, definitely. But I tell anyone else, like, nah, man, don't say like. I'll call Revoke, and I'll be like, bro, can you help me with something? And like, he's like, use your shit. I'm like, come on, man. He's like, your shit's the best. I'm like, don't fucking lie to me. I know it's trash. I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm yeah. like, this piece is good. That piece is trash. Like, but yeah, it's it's in the eye of the beholder too, yeah, right? Like, totally. it's you know. But I still like. It was dude painting painting's fucking hard, man. Doing a like yeah. doing a real a long big ass fucking piece is a pain in the fucking ass. It's like well, we're day. we're inspired it, to do better, right? You ever trip on those writers that have like one single tag? Yes. That's it, dude. One outline one, one for the outline. whole life. <laughs> Thirty years of 30 one years outline. Of one and they're outline. cool with that. And that's yeah. I, I that's cool too. But yeah. like I just like I, I wouldn't be able to. I get there's so a couple bored, that I respect because they're so good at it. Yeah, just that one thing. Yeah, there's a couple writers that are like it doesn't matter. Right. But there's a couple where I'm like, bro. Just do try do anything. Try different. something else. Yeah. Make your letters more square or something. Yeah. yeah, dude, give me give me a different fill in. Yeah. put some plaid in no, there. Can't. It's a weird mentality. I mean, graffiti writers in general are just weird humans. Like what right. makes us tick? So, it's you know, it's, it takes all types. I mean, graffiti. Yeah, the 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 graffiti writers, and I, I talked about this in the beginning of the pod. Is like the motivation to write graffiti is like you know you think of all the things that you can do in the city as a kid, and you know you take away. You know, all the people that did sports or fucking became actors or yeah. skateboarding yeah. and like graffiti and there's gang banging and all these different things, drugs, you know, they all yeah. intermix. And just graffiti right. writers alone, like it's just a weird like I know that from meeting younger graffiti writers that the the person a, a writer has not changed like that person is the fucking same person. Right. Like I can talk to you and I can talk to a new guy and it's like you have the same fucking mentality. <laughs> right. The same weird like we all have some weird shit going on, right? Yeah. Got to be, because it's like it's not normal. That's not normal, right? I like, think it's, I think it's a natural human thing to want to write on shit. Yeah, but uh, it's not like it doesn't really make sense. Like you get older and you try to think yourself as logical. There's no logic to graffiti. No, it just fucking it's endless. It's just like it's like it's like <laughs> it's endless fucking thing. It's like yeah. masturbating all the time. You're not going yeah. anywhere with it, dude. Right, but unless I think, you're like those like small people that are super masturbators or something, they right <laughs> experts. They figured it out. <laughs> they got some tricks. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, uh, no matter what, though, I think I don't even people that don't write, they get a kick out of writing on shit. You yeah. give somebody a fucking marker, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. They're just like, give me that can. They get all yeah, goofy yeah. and giddy. Yeah. And I did a little, you know, weird some even at work. Like my thing right now, I always go to the job sites. And I and they for a while they were they were like don't give this guy a marker or a fucking walkie talkie because I always talk shit on the radio or I get the marker and I start tagging in the shitters and when I tag on the shitters I don't just tag like I don't do any graffiti I, I draw shit or I write something fucked off like so or something. somebody else could contribute to it and it just becomes a shit storm you're every tagging fucking in the job potties site, every job site I just drawing dicks and stuff. cause a shit storm yeah. and the same thing is some guys get they get a kick out I get over here people talking like hey did you see what I do in the restroom or I saw what yeah, you yeah. did. They're like, who's the artist here on the job? And you could hear people talking amongst each other <laughs> hey, about Michelangelo. it. And I'm walking around, I'm just like, dude, that dude. Well, are you ever on a job where you, super bad. where you do graffiti and someone tries to bro down with you on their graffiti? You know, like I did a job where like this like male, I was like doing the, the backdrop, this like models were, were, were doing shit, female and male. And the male guy came out, he's like, pretty motherfucker. He's like, I wrote, I wrote <laughs> oh, graffiti before. Homie. You're like, no, you didn't, dude. He goes, climbed up to the water tower in my town, wrote class 97. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But he's like, I was like, Sick, dude. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, like we're on the same level, bro. Yeah, like, you're I got like, you, bro, I got you. I, I've dedicated the last twenty years of my life to this, is and probably spent two years in jail behind this. So what do you, you know? What have you actually yeah. done? What do you got? And it's like also, but that guy is like, that guy has a chiseled jaw and a fucking, you know. I mean, I'm not mad. I think it's cock, I and he's got a great way in the world. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah what totally. Mean? Back to I think okay, here's here's my other take on graffiti too. I think more than the graffiti itself is the best part about graffiti, in my opinion, is just like the people and the stories of what happens, right? Yeah. Take away the art, which mm -hmm. is important, but oh, like the people absolutely. and the fucking shit that we've all been through like for the past, you know, the yeah. years, like it's- Well, you're getting yourself in, in a pickle, especially if you're doing gr illegal graffiti, you're gonna put yourself in a situation, you know, you're gonna, you're exposed to all the street life. Right. You know, like right. you're out there, you're fucking butt naked, yeah. uh, you're open to the world, like it's yeah. like, so you're gonna it's things are gonna happen you know you're, yeah. you're 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 gonna see that underbelly of society if you're if you're a real graffiti writer going out there and doing stuff yeah 
and you're and you're dealing with it on both fronts because you're fucking you got to deal with uh, the local people in the street. You got to deal with the cops. Yeah. And it's like every and fucking homeless people. Like, All that stuff. Oh, everything. Uh, That's what I'm saying. You're open, shit. dude. Uh, yeah. That's the, wor- the worst thing in the world fuck. about being a graffiti writer is the contact with human shit. Yes. Yeah. Human shit is too terrible. Much. Yeah. It's fucked up. Too, many, too much human shit in yards. Like, that's just the worst thing in the world. When you're forced to step in it because you got to finish that part of your piece. Yeah. <laughs> or when <laughs> you wipe it on your friend's leg on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, you know, we, we talk like, you know, if you think about like Saber, like Saber is probably like one of the, one of the masters of like the horrible graffiti war stories, like of self torture, that's self torture. Yeah. yeah I impaled myself on a fence. Yeah. And he was just like, you, he's telling you stories. You're just like, fuck, <laughs> you know, like the, only him though. Yeah. He, he tortures himself more than anybody. Yeah. It's very tor- he was the only person back in the day that I knew could break a cap off in a can and he didn't do it once. He did it like a bunch. Of, so he, he would, he would keep his cans that he broke and then return them to fucking Kmart and say, these are defective. Right. <laughs> you know, smart. but we were, were you on motor that one day when smart. you broke a cap off in a can and you tried to pop it out with a, a, a knife and the can exploded in his yep. face? Yep. And he was <laughs> nice. just black, everything. The That's only thing that wasn't black was his teeth. <laughs> yeah. I was glad that he took that heat because if it wasn't him, it would have been me. Like right. I, would, I would be, I would always making a mess of shit. But he, uh, yeah, he, man, just, just the fucking, I mean, we haven't even talked about I mean, the, the other thing about graffiti too is that the unending amount of beef. Like, as yeah. soon as you start doing graffiti and you start becoming a part of it, there's just beef. If you're doing graffiti, if you're doing it, if yeah, you're doing you're not it, right if you're like, tower. yeah, if yeah, you're exactly. In the mix, or if you're doing it right. Right. If you're doing it right, I mean, it's like so ego driven anyway. And it's like, ego driven, right? Like, what the fuck? I mean, it's, it's an aggressive kind of thing to do. It's an ego sport art. It's an ego sport art. Yeah. 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 It's and and, and the beefs. Like when I think about it now, when I think about like someone having a beef, like I'm so far from it. You sure. guys might still be in it. I'm so far from having a fucking beef. Like I get frustrated with people. Yeah. But having a beef. Yeah. No, like, I can't like, no, dude. Like it's, I'm, it's on site with this person. Like, nah, what, like that's, that's shit. I mean, especially it's it, graffiti so ridiculous anyway. Like I right. can't imagine like, like right. that also like. Right. Yeah. Fuck out when of you here, get man. perspective on it, you're like, wait a minute. Like this, this is just stupid. Right. Yeah. Right. How do I explain this to my kids? How do you explain this to your kids? Yeah. Well, you have kids. You guys both have kids. Yeah. yeah. My and balls work. Yeah. His balls work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about? Uh, did you ever date anyone that ended up in another industry that was surprising that you were a fan of? <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about? We can't talk about. Is that you rude? can talk about whatever no, the fuck you want, know. dude. We keep wow. talking about sex stuff. Like I, I went out with a chick that like me. got into the adult industry, right? Which was crazy because like I remember that, and I remember like you're dating her. Shout out to her. I won't. You know, um, I don't know. Uh, is that weird? Edit that out. <laughs> no secrets, dude. No secrets. Yeah. Powerful truth. Hey, yeah. uh, I remember Tim was dating this girl, and then she ended up in the adult uh, business of uh, film, and we were like still relatively young, and it being like mind boggling. But it was, it was. I think it's just because where we're from. Like, if we were like a, a Chicago crew or something, it's yeah. just like the the smut industries in the valley yeah, like that's, yeah, yeah i mean i'm sure it's different now with like webcams and all that shit but like you know all your vhs tapes back in the day yeah van nuys canoga park yeah, yeah. Chatsworth, Vivid. that's yep. it it's like 90 yep. percent of that yep. fucking entire industry yeah so i mean we used to get jobs did you ever do a job for for that that uh <laughs> no i remember that, that happening, corn ranch though. i remember that happening I didn't, yeah, ranch. I didn't get one of those jobs no. one of the homies was re- uh he was the secretary to this porno place and it lay out all these like little sound studios. Yeah. And it's like Hollywood sound studios. So like the tables were shorter and the chairs yeah. were weird. Yeah. And I did like this like fake like basement. And like I, I got centerfold to like, it was either we or Cherry, one of those old Johns. Like, oh, wow. And there's like, you know. It was like a ass. set that they just shot everything and just had graffiti all yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like like one that was supposed to be like a living room. There's one like old West style cowboy thing. There was like a jungle room, like all these like dumb things. They're just like little, just little fuck rooms that everyone just yeah, like just cycle through. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> right. yeah. I remember we, uh, I remember Cox uh, did the graffiti in Double Dragon. Yeah, remember that? And Tyke too, yeah. I think it's Cox and yeah. Tyke, yeah. And like you can still see like there's screen grabs where like there's Cox tags oh, yeah. and like That's, I yeah. remember and that and that when you're younger for you writers like maybe the Just apex of like, like he made you're it, like he made it huh we did <laughs> it. you know like for <laughs> real dude yeah. yeah and it was like it was so limited at that time so you knew what few videos had graffiti in them yeah like the Tupac video with Pale and um, yeah. Uh, was it Krenz or somebody? Yeah, I think it was. I don't know. Whatever. That was like fucking holy shit. Who's the Mac? Who's the Mac? Who's the Mac? That was like over. That was like 
insane. Yeah. That, was, that was unreal. Dude. That was unreal. You were yeah. like, what? Like, it's literally like no one knows about this culture and all of a sudden you see it on MTV Raps and you're like, Ooh. You remember the David Lee Roth video with the, the big Dave piece in the LA River? I think MK did that. Oh, maybe really? Slick did it. I, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But that was all, like I'm saying, like you knew which ones had what, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sick. Or that, that R&B video you were in. Oh yeah, just kicking it? Yeah. Escape. Does everyone know about that? <laughs> I think we've talked about it on the show before. It's good, dude. I it's, screen grabbed that shit. It's pretty good. With right. my nose ring. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. You look good, dude. Yeah. I, made the, yeah. the, I made the screen grab an emoji on Discord. You did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like I keep that. thinking about shaving my head and getting a nose ring again, just to kind of go full circle. You know, wear what I mean? some like mustard pants. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Balls, no shirt. One Back to my R and B days. Yeah. Dress yeah. colors, bust that shit out. Yep. Do it. Um, I'm gonna take a piss and then we'll wrap this up. Ah, dude, so, I want to take a piss too. Back to my other question is if you could go back to yourself as a young fucking toy. Uh huh. You know what? A, you know I was such a fucking toy that there was a point when I was a kid in my bedroom when I was like. I did like I never would believe in God, but I was like, oh, God. I prayed to God. I was like, God, can I please get an A.W.R. Dude, <laughs> that's like a young like teenage kid. Like I wanted to get in so bad. Like I was just like, Dear Father God. Yeah, Dear Father God who art in heaven, can I please get in the exalted graffiti called A.W.R. and be a member in good standing for the rest of my life? Dude, I would pray when I was. I went to juvenile hall for like six months, and I like would do that just just let me out god i will decorate the city <laughs> you were so fucking the last time. You were fucking psychotic <laughs> you could not fucking stop i was in for 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 graffiti too i'm telling you it's because yeah. the way the reason why you couldn't stop is because you got too good you mastered it it's like becoming a fucking like it's listen this is gonna sound stupid to people but you can't it mastering graffiti is a real thing and if you master graffiti You've, you've learned a fucking craft that is on par with mastering almost anything else. It's like guitar. It's like having a fucking black belt in something. Picture, yeah, fucking really. It you've is. Put, you've yeah. put in the 10,000 fucking hours. Yeah. The problem is it's hard to ever... It's like it's like being a master of like karate. It's like can you commodify it? Can you can you build a house with it? Not yeah, really. Yeah, the and then what? That good. There's no payoff. You still have to fucking yeah. get a job. You still got to paint well, houses. If, if you if you like it and you're passionate about it, the, the payoff is just doing it. You yeah, know, it's like I've, I've never been like super heavy on on documenting my stuff. Yeah, but I really like catching tags. You yeah. know, if, if I'm if I'm Fuck like yeah. coming home from work and I catch a tag or two, yeah, I'm, I feel fucking, fucking great, made dude. man right there. Uh, That's my therapy. Yeah, it feels that good. It's like feels great, dude. And I, you know, I have I have to this day like is even though I'm inactive and fucking lame, like I have the <laughs> utmost lame. respect for for guys that that can break graffiti on that level because they don't. Nobody knows what it takes to be like a GK or like MQ or do what Alloy does. Like you don't understand the time. Yeah. When I see it, even I throw up, right? You see a JA throw up, right? Mm -hmm. Say whatever you want about the man. When you see that throw up, you're like, dude, that is a lifetime dedicated to a couple lines. Absolutely. You know, like, and also like when it's all said and done, we're going to be fucking dust. You're going to yeah. die. It yeah. doesn't, you can't take anything with you. Yeah, no, that's that really matters. matters. It doesn't fucking, it doesn't, yeah. it's all. None of it matters. None of it matters. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. that. It doesn't, none of this shit matters. None, yeah. Nothing I fucking do, nothing I fucking buy, nothing yeah, I fucking eat or shit matters. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to fucking die. Mm -hmm. And it's like. That's it. And some are remembered longer than others. And you'll be remembered yeah. longer than the guy that didn't do it. Maybe. And you gave your yeah. life to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people don't ever give their life to anything. A lot of people give their life over to fucking trying to appear like they're doing something. Yeah. And uh, that's another thing I feel fortunate for. Like, I found something that I like. Yeah. You know, those dudes are like, you know, in their 40s, they're still grasping. Like, they were a biker a couple weeks ago, and then they're a rockabilly, and then they're yeah. a Rastafarian. <laughs> fucking transformer. And then, yeah. they're, then they're whatever, you know, like, just, just trying to find their fucking way. Out. Yeah. 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 No, it's interesting, too. And, like, I, you know, I didn't even, you know, when I started writing graffiti, like, my start was, I was always drawing as a kid. And I started seeing graffiti and being like, uh, like you know, you see like a V13 tag, a Dogtown cross, you know, right. on the ground. Like you start picking shit up, you know. And I was like, I want to do that. And I thought, I also felt like, I thought graffiti was, I thought it was like the way graffiti was portrayed in the media because I didn't know anything about it. Uh, sure, was that it was an urban thing. It was like this is what I thought. You had to be in a gang. Yeah, you had I, to be in a gang. You had to be black or Mexican. Like that's yeah. and I was like, okay, this is how I'm going to. To, to identify myself as as like a minority by doing graffiti. As a little kid, I wanted to start a gang that only wrote graffiti. Right. 
<laughs> bunch of babies and then I found in the basement. Right there. No, well, I was like, I was like, well, we don't have a neighborhood. We don't have a byline. We're just gonna write, do that graffiti part of the gang stuff. Right. And then I found their tagging crew. I was like, holy shit. You're like, it exists. <laughs> oh my god. It's fucking it's funny. Hard. But then you join a crew in like the west side, the west side to the valley of LA, and it's like it's not what you think it is. Yeah. Everyone's not fucking, you know, it's not it's not an element of rap. Everyone's fucking like most of the dudes are white in in like this in this area. Right. You know what I mean? Um and it's just not it wasn't what I thought it would be. It became something much bigger and much crazier. But um Well, there's that other aspect too, is when you get a little older and then you start meeting some of your like teenage idols. Yeah. Meet don't ever meet not your heroes. As cool. No, yeah, they're never right. as cool. And you're like, I yeah. Man, yeah. I, I think that happened a lot when I when I moved to New York. Like I met these dudes, like oh they're the shit, and then like I meet him, and I'm like this guy's, bro. I'm such a fucking Dude, lame. Like, I I stand out on. Um, I was in New York doing a job. I was shooting something, and like the thing I was shooting was in uh, the Bronx, and it was like it was like um, Bio and those dudes, Tats Crew. Right. They have a workshop. Right, and the whole thing is like it's like graffiti writer paradise. Like there's like statues of graffiti writers. Like I have a bunch of pictures of it. It's sick. Right, and I remember like and I like and I and I've become such a different person. Like I'm I don't I'm just not as much of an asshole anymore. And I'm like more earnest. <laughs> and I remember talking to the guy and being like, I was talking to one of those dudes from Tats, and I'm like, mm. oh man, like it's really cool to meet you. Like I, I like oh, it's so cool. Like and I, I was like kind of fanning out of him, and I could look at him and I could see his face just being like. Get out of here. Why? Yeah, exactly. Like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, I'm like no, fuck? sir, I'm not. I'm not a toy. I'm, and I'm just like, fuck. I blew it. I, I assure you, it. I'm not a toy. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but like, you know, and you learn, you learn to bury all that shit real quick as as a young guy. You're just like, oh, you can't show any, especially in the '90s. Right. You can't be earnest. You can't show any fucking emotion. You can't, you can't ever express that. Like, you know, for a long time, you couldn't even like appreciate anything without right. being like destroyed for it. You're, You're like, like, yeah, fucking jocker, like some yeah, weird yeah. shit. Like, hey, I just yeah. like your style. I'm not saying yeah. I want to fucking give you a back rub. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, hey, a nice piece. Oh, you fucking lame. You're like, <laughs> fuck. In, in, in Philly, they have a term, uh, instead of saying jocking, they say dick eating. Yeah, dick eating. Fuck. I, and they'll, they'll say, someone will try and give you credit for something. Like, yo, I like your shit. I know dick eater. Yeah. But you shit's, your shit's hard. Yeah, you gotta have a caveat on that. Yeah, I'm like, all right. <laughs> I've only heard that term in Philly. Has that traveled out here yet? I've never heard the term you should dick start eater it. in Philly. Yeah. What's up with Philly though? How's that going? Uh, it's cool. It's it's you know it feels way different when I when I visit LA. You know, Philly feels like a giant town. Right. Um, it's very towny, huh? Yeah, because we don't really have wide streets there. Like everything in here is so big and vast and open. It just fucking goes on forever. Like Philly's kind of like. Uh, it's an old style city, you know, like LA is a new style city. People left Philly and they're like, we fucked up this city. This isn't really probably not how we should do it. Like we're going to start over in LA and California and Arizona right. and stuff. When um, you, when you come back to LA, are you one of these people that has to go eat in place, certain places? I mean, I'll, I'll, I got to <laughs> hit Mexican food. Well, the Mexican food is <laughs> the thing I probably miss the most. Yeah. I'm Mexican in general. I miss a lot, you know, just like the culture. You just miss Mexicans. I love, I miss my Mexicans. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, food, whatever. You know, same taco spots or in and out or something dumb like that. You know, in and out, right? That's like the, everyone says that shit. They gotta Woo. get the in and out just once. Yeah. I'm good with that. You know, right. what's you your ta- just... what's your taco spot? You gotta hit. Uh, fuck, dude. I I don't even think I've really. We went to King Taco yesterday. Yeah, in East LA. Yeah, that was pretty Me good. Zest, yeah. No shit. What's yeah. up with Zest? He's doing good. Chilling. He's chilling, man. I saw him the other night. Zest is fucking cool. Zest is. There's a couple of dudes in the crew, like. Zass, Alloy, like a couple of these guys who like, no matter what the fuck was going on, like there's always been drama. Mm-hmm. They've just always been like, it's just been like it a separate, matter. separate yeah. thing. They don't give a shit. They they're professional, like, yeah. They're, they're super just like, hey, you're the homie. I'm, the, I'm like, that's, you know, I, listen, I yeah. love everyone in the crew. Mm-hmm. I love all my guys, even if they don't love me. And I, you know, I want nothing but like, you know, I honestly, in my heart of hearts, like have nothing but like love and respect for everyone that I came up with in that graffiti crew. Like, it's like you guys like, I don't know. You guys, like, it sounds corny, but you guys gave me a life when I didn't have one. I think a bunch of us came together and we didn't have lives. Yeah. And we created lives together. Because I don't Mm -hmm. think we would have ended up, like, fucking huffing paint or something. (laughs) It's some fucked up shit. No, you're right. I think the same thing, too. I think, you know what? The fact that we're lucky to have a crew that's not just graffiti-based, like, you have to do graph or you can't hang out with me. Right. Like we said earlier, you know what I mean? We've all hung out and done things for each other that's, like, on some French shit, like fuck yeah. the graffiti. You happen to do great graffiti, you're a bad motherfucker. Well, we but we helped each other. Other it's shit like, that's more important in my eyes, That that's what makes a fucking crew strong. And we've had that yeah. structure, we've had that you know, influence and that leadership, luckily, thankfully, Thank you know, you for Eclipse. years to go, yeah. And, and it's still going and that's what I think 
that's what keeps our our boat floating for so yeah. long you know with the legacy and, the and that talent too i think there's like this weird thing in our crew where it's fucking the success you know there's like if you did a, like if you did like an all-star team you know, I don't think our, our top 10 can be touched as far as like accomplishments. Oh, if there was like, in, in if there was like a graffiti, a graffiti <laughs> yeah. Olympics? Yeah. Oh Fuck yeah, dude. That would be fucking no, insane. It's, it's, you know, yeah. we, we got some wizards in the crew. Well, we used to have a joke. Uh, Espo had a joke that he was going to send out uh, invitations to uh, the graffiti awards <laughs> to all these like old heads, like especially subway riders and see so how many of those fucking assholes actually showed up. So, oh, are you, you know, kidding like, me? Oh, finally I get my achievement award like right you're not getting shit dude right but you that's know? all secretly like we all somewhere deep deep inside want something like that like yeah if you're still active like there's still something you need from it right i mean we still yeah we need that recognition like we're fucking thirsty as shit you right know? <laughs> it's just fucking thirsty right like it's <laughs> yeah, like you, you know me. doing graffiti is like uh it's the first it's the first brush a normal person can have with being famous Sure. When you're a kid and they go, oh, you're Al. Oh, you're so yeah, exactly. And then and then you're like, like if this ever happened, yeah, that's, to right. that's right. Yeah, why? What's up? Yeah, that happened to me in front of a girlfriend of mine once, and it was the <laughs> fucking best shit in the world. I was like, <laughs> he's like, oh, you're fucking Utah. I'm like, yeah. And then like my girlfriend's right there, and I was like, fuck yes. And that's I could see right. she was like, oh, you know, this somebody. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, and the, you know, it, it, that's the whole crux of graffiti is fucking fame. Yeah, yeah right, it is. Dude. When it all you comes know, down to his fame. I yeah. know people. I, you remember when people say like, "Well, I don't even care who sees my shit." Yeah, right. And you're like, "Yeah, nah, why do you paint?" But you got that yeah, spot on the freeway dude. that you're psyched about right yeah, now. I don't you care know? who sees it. Yeah, some fucking bullshit. Align yourself. It's funny your story about TJ because I had the opposite story in Japan. I was out there with uh, you. Remember Taco? Tall, no, ta taco. Ta taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah tall yeah, taco. Yeah, English dude. taco. Nah, never met homeboy. It was different. A different. You were you would probably bounce by then. He was around a lot. Later on, where like, is he at? He, I saw some songs at the dance. He was he here, Hawkins, like yeah. two years ago or something. He was here for a while, and now he's in uh, Italy. Um, Damn, but I was in Japan with him a few years back, born and raised, and um, I was tagging on shit, and uh, and I was tagged on a parking meter and like pretty in front of a cop, and the cop came up to me and was like, he's like, hey, and he's like speaking to me in Japanese, he's like pointing to me, he goes, hey, and he's like pointing to me and being like, you know basically trying to arrest me and i somehow was like no i basically just told him no until he left me alone it's fucking i couldn't believe it it's like, and Taco was like what the fuck happened i was like i just like i just Stuck kept saying no, no. Yeah. and he just was like i think he just was like there's two big guys i don't <laughs> think like, they had guns it. he's like i don't want to deal with this you know i think that's yeah. what he felt like or maybe it's an honor thing like if you say no long yeah. enough they're like okay you're a bitch <laughs> so funny, they're like, dude. oh you want to lie you want to dishonor yourself fuck it <laughs> 10 no's and you're out of here yeah 10 no's and you're good any questions from the peanut gallery i'm gonna tell you the story of my first panel okay my first girl I was like 16, around the time when Iron Lap first came out. So we had that squiggly string situation. So you have cancer now? <laughs> no, 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 I'm chilling, I'm chilling. No, she was Terrible toxic. Australian brand, like, yeah. you know, shout out to the paint, whatever. Right. But uh, I, I wanted to be that dude, you know, all my cans were gonna be fucking wiped down. I just watched Dirty Hands, I was full in the mood. Sure. I was gonna hit a panel, it was gonna be amazing, whatever. All my homies were cheap, so they got like, paint that they had stolen or house paint or whatever i had like you know graffiti paint rocked up to the spot we'd sat there for two days saw the fucking times that the guards were going in and out we scoped it out legit went and hit the yard my fucking paint explodes nice. squiggly string out of every single fucking can i'm covered in this terrible smurf blue everyone's <laughs> laughing at me we get fucking chased out of the yard. I fall over into a pile of mud. I'm covered in fucking blue mud, everything, whatever. I didn't get arrested, but ended up getting the shit kicked out of me by a junkie that night. It was a fucking Fuck. incredible experience and tried to paint a train fucking two, three times that month. Got the shit kicked out of me every time for the same junkie. It was like the guard. Oh, shit. It was hilarious. <laughs> hey, when, when the cops catch you, for what's it like when you get busted for graffiti in Australia? It's pretty harsh. Oh, they fucking shit on you. Yeah, they you, do. You're huh? getting a lot of trouble there. They throw you in jail. Look what happened to Re Look what happened to Reebok. Ooh. Yeah, they he, he kind of brought they that up. They destroyed himself. him out here. <laughs> Reebok. Reebok. Oh, Reebok. Oh, yeah. Like, Who the fuck is Reebok? Yeah, Re my bad. My bad. <laughs> Australia. Australia. Oh, that's right. They did fuck with him in Australia, huh? Yeah, I mean, yes, so bad. Lose. I think he kind of fucked with them first and kind of. Oh yeah! Oh, like, I remember that whole thing. Yeah, he, he was like, that "Tweet." He's like, "I want to put some gasoline on this fire." Yeah, and he like said like where he was yeah. going too, so they knew. Where oh, he I remember that? 
That was crazy. I've still got photos. Fo- I've still got photos of those panels as well. That set was sitting in the yard for so long. It's so know. many people went to go take photos of that. That's cool. That was pre like blown out social media when all this shit was like on fucking Tumblr and shit. Yeah, right? it was like yeah, yeah. Just, just catch it on YouTube and Tumblr. 12 ounce. Yeah, yeah, twelve ounce and just like fuck, dude. And Revoke too. Like at that time in graffiti, you know, before he like transitioned, like he was, he was at like his status was legendary. <laughs> Right, like he he's, was a superstar. Yeah, he's the fucking man. Yeah, yeah, super safe. I mean, you want to talk about a a, a a a guy that plays for all the teams? Can I say that right? You know what I'm saying? Like a guy that can do. <laughs> I think he's called him gay. No, a guy that yeah. can do everything. Okay. Right. Yes. There isn't one he's part of man. it that he can't do. He's he's really the best. really. If, you, really if you're well. asking me, my best the best. He might be the best. The best 25 years. I think he might be. The, he might. As far as American, like, I'm sure there's some European that's like done quadruple amounts as him. Dude, but whatever. Really, he's really good. Fuck. But like, as far as like changing up his style, yeah. And like, he had like, um, I always used to say that to be a real graffiti writer back in the day, you had to do three things. Yeah. Write, rack, and fight. Yeah. And you could do all three of those. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I sucked at the fighting part, but I could rack and write. Right. And like. There's some dudes that suck at all three of those, right? And they're they're graffiti writers, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, but you, I mean, just you got to do the minimum of any of those. You but know? even within that, within that, in the writing part, you have to be able to do a tag, a throwy, and a piece. Sure, that's the idea, right? And yeah. then that guy can do the most insane wild stuff. Twice, and, everything twice, right? And he can <laughs> do half like, the time, <laughs> yeah. And he can just do an ill throw up where you're like, that's fucking really, sucks, dude. Really good, yeah. yeah. He sucks painting next to him, yeah. And you're on a timer, yeah. And he's just, come on, bro. You look over and you're fucking doing your outline. He's already finishing the K. I know. And I'm like a lot more simple than him too. So he's like, he's like, are you done? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, but add some more stuff to it. And I'm just like, oh, add some speckles. I'm good, dude. Like, that's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how, like, I think there's something to, there's something about, I don't know what makes someone like him or Eclipse or some of these other guys like so good. That they've they literally like past a certain year they've never done anything bad like they hit one year and after that year i mean yeah. i don't know when eclipse did anything bad like yeah. i'm sure there's one piece out there but like mm-hmm. i've never seen any of those guys pull up and not do something 100 like legit that's a big fear of mine though so you know like dudes that like like disappear for like 5 10 15 years yeah and then they bust out again and you're like oof. yeah it's all janky yeah it's, like, it's all glued it's together horrible, and shit. maybe yeah, should have stayed should have away stayed yeah. yeah like it's just wonky and like they're in that stupid conversation all like, what is this australian paint or a, right. a zimbabwe fat cap <laughs> <laughs> you're like uh-huh like not yeah. that funny but uh <laughs> yeah dude it's a fear man like like dudes that like lose their whip in their tags yeah yeah, yeah. their tags it's, are just like a little lumpy now yeah, like you lose that shit it's it's real you know Use it. There's a difference between you fucking drawing on paper and an iPad and then going out and painting. It's a big fucking trust. Yeah. Dude. Like these guys are always trying to get me out to come paint. And I'm like, it's, yeah, it, it could be fucking ugly. It could be really it's bad. fun. Yeah. I, I have to limit my expectation to be very think very simple. Don't yeah, don't focus on that. Focus on the fun aspect. Focus on the fun. Yeah. 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 Keep it fun. That's the one thing I miss. About, how many? Oh, oh fucking sorry, how many years? <laughs> Who's this? How many years have you guys been painting for? One hundred. <laughs> I mean, you guys. About 30? About? Yeah. I mean, I haven't been consistently painting for 30 years, but I started when I was like 15. 15. 15. I hit 20 last year, and I thought I'd made it, and then I tried to do a pace, and uh, yeah, I should have left it. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm talking for 20 years and don't even get anywhere. You're just fucking stuck in the quicksand. Fuck. I think also your focus changes. No dick sucking. No dick sucking. Pro dick sucking, if you have to. It's dick eating. Um. My bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. What was I saying before? I was so rudely interrupted by Tel Aviv Cowboy. Something like that. Oh, you want you want to uh, uh, in with inspirational quotes? Yeah, absolutely. You got some. <laughs> so the best advice I ever got when I was like seventeen was from uh, Pale STP, who yeah. was a. Bell's hard. Yeah, he was one of my favorites growing up. Yeah. He said, uh, and I was I was fucking bananas. Like I was all all about that shit, and he was like sort of slowing down at that point. Yeah. And he told me to go as hard for as as hard as you can for as long as you can because shit's gonna get in the way in life, whether you have fucking babies or fucking <laughs> he's, he's got like grandchildren at that point. <laughs> but like mental health, do too much jail time, you know, things happen, you fall off something, might hurt yourself. Like Oof. like you might not get another chance to fuck up your life as good as you can when you're younger wise words and just like fucking just go he's for like it. go fucking harder fuck and like role. yeah like yeah fuck all that shit just like fucking destroy your life and uh there you go have a good time 
Fuck. You took his advice. Yeah, yeah, I totally did. I, 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 I repeated that to, to many young writers. Like, <laughs> go ahead and fuck up your life. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, what's up, y'all? What up, yeah? Well, um, I had a couple things. First thing, I just got that thing y'all talking about, you couldn't breathe through your nose. Right. I just got my septum, septoplasty. Oh, really? And Congratulations. Dude, motherfuckers didn't put me out all the way. So I felt the whole fucking oh, thing, shit. but I couldn't move or talk. No. That's a fucking nightmare. Dog, it was wild as fuck. And I came to, and they were you like, Come uh, somebody in the know, face? Like, you're out in the hospital or whatever. They're in the bed, and they're like, uh, so How you feeling? And I was like, I felt the whole fucking thing. And dude was like, Well, how are you really feeling? I was like, the fuck you want me to answer? How, how do I answer that, bro? That's, like, that's it. Fucking, yeah, I told you. That's what my head. And uh, my blood pressure was too high. They wouldn't let me get out because I was so keyed up. And dog, it felt like a baseball bat. Got yeah, to touch my fucking face like a week. But I'm breathing out of my nose now. I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of people get that operation and don't ever get to breathe right afterwards. Mm. And that's what I'm worried about. Like I would love to have extra air flow in my nostrils. What is that called? The you got it, the septum, the deviated septum thing. Yeah, but there was yeah. another and he said something else. I rhinoplasty. He called it rhinoplasty, right? Septoplasty. Septoplasty. Yes, yeah. I, they, I it's a hardcore that band. I got my, it's a hardcore <laughs> band. <laughs> That's right. Death metal. That's right. Oh, yeah, breathe. rhinoplasty is uh, the, the cosmetic. Cosmetic. Nose job. Oh, see, no. My, my shit, they didn't do anything. They just went in there and fucking drilled out a hole and said, you're right, dude, you're done. You're fucking nose. And you're good? Cartilage was kind of full. Yeah. Both nostrils break. work? Yeah. They oh, didn't like man. break nothing or do. I came out that day with from surgery, not even, you couldn't even tell I had surgery. It was just like, cool. God like damn. Dewalt to you? Yeah, that's what I fucking thought. I looked up and I seen like, just a pack of bloody boogers and just fucking had to go back and the dude had these tongs and he was pulling like stabby boogers out for a week. Oh, it was like fucking crazy. You should have just done it yourself. Just. I was trying to, I really was. And I was like, you know what? He's going You're away. Trying to get there. I was, I can't have shit in my nose. I got like, like OCD. I'm like fucking blowing my nose, but they said, don't blow it. Don't pick at it. But if you got like some fucking, fucking hairy, nasty, bloody yeah. thing hanging, you're just gonna, yeah, right? You yeah, know what I mean? Out. So I had to go to this dude and he kept taking them out and stuff and it wasn't that bad though. Fuck, maybe I should look into it. I mean, imagine if I could turbocharge my uh, my air intake. It's like add a spoiler. <laughs> just you know? stick things in there. Like like start slow. Dude, of cocaine, I'm always, dude. <laughs> I'm always thinking, I've done no, that too. like <laughs> objects, dude. Like maybe Mark, start with a pen. Oh, he's know? riding it. And then you get to this one. Right. And then you get to this one and then you are you can breathe fucking great. So a UFC fighter do that. He fixed the dude's nose with a pen. He was like, get the fucking fuck molding. And the guy goes, hey, he was doing the interview. The dude <gasps> walked up and his nose was fucked off. And he goes, let me show you how I fix it. And he fucking put the guy on the floor and he got a pen. And he was putting his nose in. He was like, you just kind of. Just kind of like tug on the cartilage and kind of shape it right. And he's fucking pinky. jamming the pin, and this dude's nose went from looking like an S to kind of like a straight little better than that. No way. I'll find the video. I'm going to send you. They're going to trip out. Whoa. Fucking That's your inspiration. Plastic. Josh Barnett, that dude. Oh, yeah. He did it to one of his guys. He was like, oh, okay. I can fix this shit. <laughs> fucking. Yeah, that was pretty rough, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Maybe we'll do our next podcast. Yeah. We'll, we'll break your nose. Yeah. <laughs> we'll break your nose and. Yeah. One nostril. Fucking bullshit. You guys got both? Both growing? You both yeah, you know what's fucked up? Like I'm straight. If, if back before, like when it's like my party days, when you do a bunch of blow and it just falls out. Yes. You try to do the line, it just it just <laughs> That was so sad. So it was pitiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. You know, but you never got into coke, did you? Nah, I, I never got into the, the really gnarly drug, drugs. You never had a drug phase, huh? Well, I, I did a lot of raving with you guys. Yeah. So I mean doing, the, the, the candy the flipping. Oh yeah, were you doing like, all this shit? Yeah, full blast. Who do you think is the worst junkie in the crew? Oh wow! I mean, that's that's personal at this point. <laughs> I don't want to blow anyone up too hard. Well, I mean, I could be me because I had to get sober because I can't handle it. You know, there's a couple guys. There's a couple guys. Yeah. I mean, listen, graffiti writers are not. We're not mentally healthy people. I got nah. And there's a lot of graffiti. I have a theory that why so many graffiti writers become drug addicts is because there's that um, that immediate uh, relief or, re or uh, immediate. Um, satisfaction you get from catching tags Instant gratification yeah. you don't got really like work i mean you have to work like you do more and more and more and you get you just yeah it, it goes on from there but like just that like impatience yeah like i want that shit fucking now yeah I'm sick of fucking needle in your eye. it is it is yeah. so satisfying to catch a tag and when you get away with it and you keep getting away, and you get away with like 99 percent of it you yeah know? totally like you just do yeah. but the problem is that extends into racking yeah it's a like, lifestyle it's a lifestyle so then like, and you have to rack guys 
Yeah, it you just can't, has, you can't buy your paint, you fucking toys. <laughs> Come up just buying paint. Dude, yeah. dude, is, when you're doing your sucky pieces, if you're buying the paint to do the sucky pieces, you're you investing in bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fucking toy I had, I had beef with these dudes not so long ago, and they were, we're it, it was a sucky beef, but like I know that they were dissing all my shit with bought paint. Yeah. Uh-huh. So these, like, not only was I like, like, getting under their skin like they spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on me that's lame you know how did you know they were buying it they leaving receipts just, or something yeah like i i, yeah, I heard the through receipts. the grapevine ah, the and then they would like be like what, what whatever we buy our paint like you know oh. we're, we're doing other stuff we don't you know we don't got time for that which is a dumb excuse you know weak yeah. it's just just weak well that's that's definitely the old school of graffiti writers i don't think that that stuff exists anymore i understand oh, you're in a pinch sometimes you can't like you know in the city i'm sure it's harder to rack paint than you know, rural Pennsylvania where I rack my paint, you know. Fuck, I saw, I, I wish I could pull this up, but I saw this guy on, like, I, you don't, you're not really, a, you're not heavy on Instagram, huh? I lost, I changed phones, I lost my Instagram account. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, yeah, I'm, in, I'm in that shit, and I, I follow, like, graph meme accounts and shit. I, yeah. And, and like, <laughs> load t- limit. Huh? Load limit. A load limit? Yeah. I don't know that one. Load limit's pretty good. They oh, show okay, like people okay. like racking and, and fun stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll look that up. Load yeah, limit. Yeah, go for it. Um, free plug. But free plug to load limit. Yeah. But I follow like Coer, you know, that one. Yeah, it's it's like funny. more comedy. And then I yeah. follow a young num elites, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> there was this shit that started coming up of like this new breed of graffiti writer who have no, they have no idea about any of the history. And they're actually like, you're lame if you steal your graffiti, if, if you steal your paint what? or like, yeah, hundred percent. Like TikTok's about like, they're talking about how they like, they and like, you know, their graffiti is like a duck, like ah, tipping yeah, its yeah, hat yeah. to you or something symbols, weird. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, it's like. <laughs> the and, and, this is the face I paint. Yeah, and like, yeah. and they have this like, uh, they're very privileged and like, I saw something where some dude was like, went to go to a yard to paint over a writer. Ooh. And then the next clip is just him with like a bloody nose. <laughs> oh, dude, I saw off. that. You saw that? And he's like all about it in New York and then he tells yeah. on the person that goes over him. And, and he yeah. gets the cops to fucking arrest he him. He tells on the person that wow. goes yeah. over him. Yeah. And then he tries yeah. to get the guy arrested for socking him. Yeah. And you're like, how can you exist? How do you even live? And they got to get socked. That's all it is. Listen, and that's some real shit. Yeah. That's like real. I'm like, not, people, I'm people not need to into violence. Punched. You got to get your ass kicked. No, I mean, there's really people that. They show that that dude was telling on somebody. That guy himself yeah. was like yeah. calling the cops to get him arrested. You're like you're doing something illegal, and you're calling the cops on the guy that did the other illegal <laughs> thing. Like, classic. what are you doing? Do you remember that old cops episode where like they they respond to a call and this woman's like, uh, this woman took my money. She took my money. Oh yeah, yeah, for the crack. Yeah, and yeah. she's like, well, what'd you get <laughs> money for? She's like, crack. And yeah, the cops uh, yeah. like what? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I gave her twenty bucks. She she went around the corner. Like, what was she doing? She's buying me crack. She's like, what the fuck? And then, they, and then they interview the woman that, that took the money. Yeah. She's like, I don't sell crack. I sell pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like cops self snitching. Cops just like, oh my god. Uh, 